to the stream. Okay, so we're gonna do the uh, recap of today's time breaks. Magnus and Tari managed to finish the uh, time in main, classical two games, and so did uh, Tambatabai. Who's gonna go play uh, Vincent Keimer? And it's kind, of, it's kind of funny because these guys, you know, like always play each other. Yeah, Sanal, who uh, managed to eliminate Abdus Satorov, is gonna play Korobov, who had to play tie breaks. Okay, so let's go to the tie breaks by Mr. Korobov versus Ituri Zaga. And let's see it. Okay, thank you. Hey, Mr. Punk TV, Ferrand, what's up? All right, so this is the first time break game, uh, according to this, right? Uh, wait. Yeah, it should be the first game, okay. All right, so the time controls you can see is 25. I think it's... Uh, either 5 or 10 second increments so 25 minutes time P the time control for the rapid events okay everybody is used to just count 10 minutes and 2 second increments but that's not a feed the time control feed the time control is more generous yeah 25 minutes classic time rapid time control and um, yeah and solid increment actually I can show you after the game all right, the, the official rules. So D4, C5, oh, C6 plays for the solid Samislav, but DC is definitely a, a, su a surprise um, uh, because Rubinstein haven't been seen in uh, classical chess for a very long time. And here, Iturizaga plays it. Um, so bishop f5. And we go on to the main line because queen e2 is the main line, bishop g6. Or knight d7. Sometimes they play knight d7, e4, bishop g6, bishop d3, and that's the main line. So knight e5 is uh, also considered to be okay, and the idea is just play this position with a pair of bishops. Black seems to be fine. Knight a2 is first line actually, but b3 uh, looks kind of weird because. Black is just pawn up. Black is just pawn up. It's pretty weird. I'll probably consider playing queen h5 here. Yeah, why just sacrifice the whole pawn and it's not clear what he's getting for. Usually I get these positions where I don't have this. <laughs> you know, why has knight on c3, bishop on g2, rook e8, I play very passive and I get these positions, you know, in this structure. But this guy got everything and a pawn. So black did uh, really good in this game. Okay, e5 looks good. So white is looking uh, how to make a draw here. Damn. Knight e4 looks good because bishop f6 is coming. Yeah, and this is a little bit probably too early. Yeah, Rook d8 makes more sense. Rook d8, protect the pawn because the bishop comes here or here thanks to this guy. Rook a6, queen d7. And bishop c6, you take the spawn, and black is better. So, um, I don't know what Korobov was planning here, maybe this. Then bishop c5, and black has very clear extra pawn. Very good chance to win. So Mr. Turizaga missed his chance uh, to develop serious advantage, because after rook d2... Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with knight f1, king f1, then knight g4. Because this looks like a forced transposition to the end game, which is very similar to what happened in the game, and looks like a draw. Okay, but he plays rook a6, still check, take. And black has extra pawn, and I expect him to play for a win here, but for some reason. Uh... Oh, okay, they played a little bit. Good. King of seven, okay. King g6, h3. Rook c2 looks correct. Advantage black. Uh, 
King e5, okay, doesn't trade. Apparently this is not the greatest move. Uh, but white doesn't play bishop c3, he is afraid to go into the rook endgame for some reason. Uh, if bishop takes g5, rook f2, f4, so bishop e1, white is extremely passive, and this is actually terrible, yeah. This is actually terrible. Um, it's interesting that it's not so easy to win this for black. One of the ways the computer plays this is he sets up this pawn formation, so white's bishop is completely locked, so let's look at this line. Like a bishop d2. Then you play g4. The idea is that now you cannot take because bishop is hanging. So he missed, he played this too fast, yeah? So he could have played rook c2. And, um, okay, so we go back to f4, rook here, and then rook c1 with the idea rook f1 check, and it looks like black is winning. Hmm. So, black rushed, yeah? Now, I was just looking at the other idea. Um, if you play rook a2, but then supposedly this, um, I don't know why he didn't like this rook end game. It seems to be very reasonable. Black has to trade this pawn for this pawn. But okay, he was playing on black's time. Black has only 50 seconds left. I see. Okay, that's why black plays um, g4. He wants to simplify the position. He sees that he is grabbing the pawn after this, and he misses bishop c3 completely. Okay. And this rook end game apparently is a draw. Okay, so that's what he missed. He missed bishop c3 here. Okay. And this is just a draw. Yeah, because white hits this pawn. And you cannot win this pawn because if you play king c3, rook goes to b5 and you hit this guy. So it's a draw. Okay. Lucky escape because the, in the end game here, black is just, you know, serious uh, advantage, yeah? Rook c2, rook c1. Hmm. Almost winning. Hello, Mr. Painterman, Mr. Veljatovic, good evening. No more Super Grandmaster, and I am out of the top 100 people. I am no longer Super Grandmaster. <laughs> okay, not that I care, but yeah. Okay, uh, game one between Korobov. So we're looking at the um, second game, and Korobov plays black. I mean, draw with black is still good for Iturizaga, unfortunately for him. I think he's playing with white sometimes a little bit worse than with black. In Corbo, he plays equally well with white and black. So let's see what happened. So Corbo plays very solid um, line. And I think Iturizaga made a small mistake here because I don't think Corbo is like really that super great in blitz chess. So I think um, Iturizaka should have just made a draw and went um, to the blitz tiebreaks, where his chances to win would be increased, I think. Um, because what happened in this game, he went for this line, uh, it's still equal, but g4 is uh, okay. Yeah, but just play normal, yeah. Rook d2, rook d1, knight g5, knight d4, trade stuff, go into the endgame, make a draw, and go to the blitz. That's what would Grishuk do, you know? Because um, after this, it's not very clear. Queen g3, a6, you still have to play knight d4, correct. Rook c8, and black is sort of, you know, drawing attention, yeah? He is trying to draw white into creating impulsive aggressive uh, attacking moves so black is like you know says okay show me show me your stuff g5 apparently is not so great but um yeah rook c5 is famous gary kasparov idea i don't know why is it good here apparently no it's not good it's just bishop c1 okay and this knight is trapped so knight h f4 looks very reasonable. He plays this move, um, and black apparently is worse. But after check, king g1, what is, how is black gonna 
counter e3. I don't understand. Hmm. Okay, this is pretty, yeah? Bishop g5, e3, knight e5. You have this cluster thing put after here. That's the only move. And you can take, or you can play this, yeah? Bishop is hanging. Bishop is gone, can't you play f4? My god, it's super complicated, yeah? But it should be advantage white, yeah? Should be advantage white. I mean, it's a piece. If you take knight c4, rook d1, queen c7, because black has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, versus 3. He has 3 pawns for a piece. Actually, maybe maybe okay for black, yeah? So. But of course, um, queen b7 looks very reasonable. But king h2 is a problem, yeah? Yeah, king h1, rook c5, so king h2 and. Knight f4, e3. Oh, so Korbov was just lost, man. Because after knight f5, knight e6, h4, white is completely winning. He's got this beautiful square for the knight. Pawn is hanging. King is very unsafe. h5 is coming. This looks absolutely terrible for black. Oh my god, are you serious? Oh my god, okay. So he didn't play this, and he didn't play this. And after this, it's like, you know, the chi file opens, and it looks pretty bad. The threat is chi f, queen f5, attacking the knight. Where does the knight go? Unclear. So probably queen d7, that was his idea. Ah, but you have to see rook h1. And king g1. Okay, that's not simple. This is not simple. And f4, wow. Okay, this is definitely not simple. <laughs> I mean, you need to find a series of moves to bring a mating attack, you know? I would just take on g6. It's still pretty good, yeah. Still pretty good, actually. Then king moves, queen h5. Still looks good, yeah. Why not? Um, yeah, but g6 is the correct move. Um, also, f4. Very standard. When you have knight on d5, bishop here, f4 is logical. For example, here, and then g6. Because black doesn't have time for all this. You're like here. Queen f5, bishop f6, and right here. Yeah. So black doesn't have time for all these uh, nice pawn breaks. Yeah, so knight h6 is an oversight that's gonna cost him dearly. Yeah, just king g8. He probably thought about knight g6, but king h8. Because of rook g1, black just takes this pawn. There is no mate. He plays queen f3. With the idea of bishop h6. Give a check. The problem with this move is that black has this idea. Covers the square, protects the pawn. And then rook g1. You take this. And... Um, and this is very important. You connect the queen. And you create this blockage along the g-file. So, interesting how they both missed it. f5 apparently is not correct. Uh, so there was nothing wrong with taking this pawn, taking this pawn, attacking this guy. Potentially bishop e5. Oh, I like this. And rook d6. Wow. Huge threat of queen e5. Um, taking g8, rook g1. The attack continues. And black has only one move to keep the advantage. And that move is this. What? And oh, king f8. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> Everything is here on the queen side, yet king is protected. Damn. Okay, but also you have to see this move, yeah? Yeah, okay, rook d8 is fine. I mean... Although this pawn is like really close, yeah? No, but king ran away, yeah, it should be win. Okay, some incredible chess. Um, yeah, he plays rook g1. And black makes a mistake again. See how hard it is to defend in positions like this with minute on the clock? It's impossible, yeah? But rook c7 doesn't spoil the position. Queen g3 is worse than queen g2. Wow, why? I don't think it's worse. I think it's... Oh, because it's knight c7. And you hit something here. Ah, wow, okay. Because you hit this guy. And you're actually threatening to take the pawn and give him mate. And black is lost. Wow, okay. Incredible. But after queen g3, he can take and there is no longer this threat. Because um, the queen protects the seventh, yeah? So, you take, take, take. Bishop g7. Yeah, not knight g7 because you lose the rook, so bishop g7. He takes it. If you take on e6, knight d5, black extra piece, and also this rook is hanging. So he takes the rook, but black still has extra knights, and this knight has nowhere to go. So take, take, and black is completely winning. Because he has knight for a pawn. Uh, still some chances for a draw. Active king, yes. Rook a6, rook a6. Put the knight on b7, terrible square for the knight. Yeah, uh, why not rook a6, man? You want to hit this pawn, play a king a4, it's very close to a draw. If you play knight b7, king a4, the king is cut off, the whole point. Okay, so he plays... Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, black did not see knight c8, which is ancient move and the idea is if you trade the rooks to take the pawn f5 black is winning huh <laughs> seriously you expect people to see this with 50 seconds on the clock no yeah and now now it's almost equal uh e4 creating the threat is better but okay check and it's a draw. Should be a draw. Rook d2 with idea rook h2, king g3, or e4. And you trade last two pawns. You grab the pawn with the rook and king. You trade this pawn with this pawn, and it's a draw. Wow, okay. But king e6, rook here. Oh, very, oh, wrong idea. Wrong idea, okay. Rook d2, rook h2. This is very passive king, and after knight of seven, knight goes here or here, and if knight gets to the square to protect the pawn, white is lost. Check, check, king g5, rook a5. Again a draw. So what did black miss? He had to play this, and then rook a7. Ah, okay, and you go on to this line. Here, here, rook e6, and rook a5, knight e5, black wins. Hmm, so you have to be very, very careful here. Some chances for a draw. Not much, though. Yeah, absolutely incredible game, man. These guys don't disappoint. So, rook a5, rook e8, e4. The last trick. Oh no, no, oh, okay, oh man. He had to take this pawn immediately. Damn. Damn, that was very hard actually, yeah. Because after this, black is winning. And he finds knight of seven, incredible. He finds knight of seven, taking away the square from the king. King cannot come. Creating a mating threat. 
and the king h3 thanks to the spawn white has no checks on the uh, vertical line my god oh draw again jesus you see how hard chess is rook e1 and knight h6 was the correct winning procedure okay black plays knight g5 and it's a draw because rook c2 and uh, horizontal checks instead he plays this and allows uh king f2 yeah knight f3 and rook g8 wow this is a thrill in manila um hello mr dillman how are you uh but guys you see this you see this right see how complicated this uh end game is uh, and it's incredible uh, white had a lot of chances to make a draw and he kept blundering into black's uh, very clever traps yeah very clever traps but it's amazing how many chances he had um also in the middle game white was completely winning yeah but the Trizaga's problem is that his end games are not uh, as good as korobov yeah all right a fantastic tiebreaker to be honest um so korobov deserves to qualify okay so next tiebreaker would be Ivanchuk. he managed to pass the very infamous grandmaster henrik vilagre cristobal it took them actually oh my god it took them all the way to the blitz tiebreaks all right let's start with the rapids and cristobal employs trompovsky with the mix of london system and the idea is to play f4 at some point. He plays, yeah, f4 would be very logical. f4, knight f3, yeah. That's the whole point uh, behind delaying the development of the knight. So you can push the first pawn and get the Dutch structure, okay? But e4, black just trades off this bishop. h4, in the spirit of French, Makechen. Knight f3 is incorrect. I mean, if you're delaying the knight, you should just put the knight in the correct square, which is f4. Because the other knight goes to f3, and this guy goes to perfect French square, which is f4, where you hit this pawn, preventing f6, and you also potentially play knight h5, hitting this weak guy, trying to provoke black into playing g6, and then you undermine the whole thing. So knight e2 was absolutely correct, Followed by queen g3, knight f3, knight f4, knight h5. A little advantage for white. Knight f3 is incorrect because you take away square from this guy. Yes, you protect the bishop, but this knight has no future. Now black is absolutely fine. So let's see how Ivanchuk uh, plays this uh, game. h6 looks natural, but now the end games are good for black. Knight f1, queen a6. But if you don't uh, trade, then okay, f6, yc is playing very safe. Uh, traditionally, black plays a4, puts knight on a5, knight here, trade, trade, b5, b4. But f6 makes sense in the rapid game because you want to not allow your opponent to attack you. Your opponent has also denied the casting rights to the safe location. I like this, uh, this very psychological decision by Vasily. Knight takes, threatening knight e4, bishop d6, and he's gonna play for the center attack and force white to trade the queens. So, queen e2, white now trades the queens because he thinks the spawn is weak, but bishop d6, rook e8, and e5 is coming. c4, playing with fire. Uh, take, take, take advantage black but he misplays it yeah rook f4 with the idea of rook g4 hitting these guys putting forcing white onto uncomfortable squares yeah this is the whole point so rook g4 and now white is forced to protect this pawn if you put the rook on g1 it's very uncomfortable if you put the king on f1 you disrupt the connection if you play king f2 there is always check and bishop f4 idea so 
Um, and the biggest problem, of course, if you take, take, you play e4, and now white is in the crosshair, yeah? Crosshair, and the threat is e4, pawn is hanging. Bishop and pair of rooks always better than the knight and pair of rooks, in open position, always. It's even better than the bishop and rook. Rook and two pairs is just monsters, with the bishop. But Vasily plays bishop f4, he's playing for e5, pinning, potentially trying to give white king some checks. But black finds some defense, or white finds resource, because if you play e5, take, take, king, d3. So, oh, he just goes for a draw. Okay. Rook e5, king comes to c3, attacking the pawn, very active rook. And you cannot play king e7, but I do rook f8 because of the d5. So this is equal a4, fixing the pawn disconnection here, king attacks c4 pawn, rook is very active, black has nothing, because rook goes and shuffles between these two squares, um, and it's a draw. So Vasily managed, uh, Vasily had an advantage, but he missed it when he played uh, this one move. See guys, one inaccurate move and the advantage is gone from plus 122 to 0.22. Just one move and almost your entire advantage is gone. Okay. See how important to know your end games? But also kind of weird because Vasily had 12 minutes versus 6. And he played this move instantly. Probably he just wanted to make a draw with white, a draw with black. Um, he probably didn't expect to win this game, and that's why um, he thinks bishop f4 just you know play safe and get a draw. Yeah, draw with black is okay, but if you have a better position, why not play? Yeah, why not play? Um, so Ivanchuk's second game. Um, Uh, okay, so he plays c4 and English, but English was knight of three. So black, yeah, if you play bishop b4, you should play knight c6, yeah? But this guy plays e4 and goes for this line. Yeah, this is very active line, active spielen. Okay, I, I like this. It's in the style of the reverse Sicilian. And black is doing fine, even according to the computer. So knight c2, take, and h6. And we have a reverse Rosolimo. And, um, you know, I, one of the ideas that um, black can have is to play b6, bishop b7, knight e5, c5, and lock this bishop out, because bishop has no squares. He doesn't have access to this diagonal. And if you play bishop b2, he does absolutely nothing here. Okay, so white's big problem is what to do with this bishop, which is why black is okay. Or you can play a simple d6, knight e5, and then put the bishop on this diagonal, yeah? So let's see. d6, a4, stops this, b3, knight e5, uh, runs into this, but uh, maybe f3. And the idea is you really want to force black to retake this pawn so you can open the bishops, yeah? Because after f4 he can... Okay, he takes, which is also okay. Knight transfers to c5, although bishop d7 also wasn't bad. Putting the bishop here and then putting the knight on c5, but knight in this move order is also okay. Because white cannot play f4, really. If you play f4, knight c5, this square is gonna be used by black. And you don't have any attack. Like, if you think there is attack, black just puts this bishop here. This king is very unsafe. Nice central square for white, black knights. Bishop c6, queen d7, knight e4, doubling the rooks. Black has very easy game. So that's why I don't play f4. That's why I see the plays rook a2. And he wants to trade off the rooks and transpose the game into the end game where he has a pair of bishops. Unfortunately for white, this is now a very serious weakness. Uh, bishop e6, again, bishop belongs probably on c6, just to counter this guy in the future. Uh, maybe he was afraid of knight f5, knight d4 idea. So bishop e6 is not bad. c6 is not looking good, but it's possible, yeah. Queen b6 hitting this guy. Oh, bishop c5. 
Okay, so Vasily really didn't like this uh, position because, um, yeah. See, the computer plays this extremely well, these types of positions. He plays very patiently, improves the rook, queen b6, now he takes on c5, and if you take with the pawn, then actually equal. So the computer takes on c5 anyway. So that's why he took uh, no queen trade. Interesting. Uh, so now white is planning for f4, f5, closing this bishop. Ah, okay, this first. And black just prepares, yeah, f5. Bishop goes, and then eventually some point everything will trade. And black's fine, very smart. Black's doing well. Knight f5, okay, Vasily. Okay, Vasily hopes to win in the blitz game because uh, this is equal. Okay, very interesting. Um, so Hendrik is doing really well, I think, so far. And now we go into the Blitz games. And Blitz games is where Vasily finally... Oh, and it's Vasily who is playing Tromposki now. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, I will check uh, all the tiebreak games, uh, okay? Also, Troy Chess, I uh, Nihal won in the prime prime time, right? So uh, I think we looked, we saw this game yesterday, yeah, um, in my recap. All right, Morim. Um, wait. Ah, two more rapids and then blitz. Ah, okay, right, exactly. So let's see. Um, actually, let's look at the regulations. You're correct, just so we... We tell, well, so that the people know the formats, okay. So the tie breaks are a two game match with 25 10, and then a two game match with 10 10. See, guys, they get 10 seconds increment. Um, the first rapid is 25 10, the second uh, rapid is 10 10. In chess.com uh, rapid events, we get only 10 plus 2. Okay, you see the difference. 10 seconds actually. Mamma mia, it's huge, you know? For older guys like me, is 10 seconds is a different is, is like a, a possible difference between qualifying for division one, division two, or being being eliminated, okay? That's why, you know, in all these rapid events that you have on Chesscom, you don't have that many older guys. Um, you mostly you see the younger guys at the top because you know two seconds is a blitz. Um, blitz increment. Alright. So they play actually four games of rapids, and then, as you mentioned, two game match in the blitz, which is three seconds increment. It's not one second increment, which is title Tuesday. And finally, there is an Armageddon with three minutes and two seconds increment still, okay? It's not one second. See, these feed of time controls, they're standard and they're pretty uh, generous, okay? And it says that if there is uh, players alternate colors and keep playing three plus two games until a decisive result determines the winner in the in the uh, in this blitz game, there is no Armageddon anymore. Oh, there is no Armageddon. Oh, that is a new. So they got rid of the Armageddon, and so you basically play blitz games of three plus two until somebody wins. Nice. Actually, that's pretty fair. But I can imagine, you know, there will be always some curious situations where people will play Blitz 3 plus 2 and nobody wins like for 5, 6 games, yeah? But on 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th game, somebody eventually blunders something. Yeah, it's an endurance uh, test. Nice. Okay, so let's go back uh, to Ivanchuk's game. And um, so they played two classics, two rapids, and now it's 10-10. Okay, 10 seconds is a lot, okay? But I like how Vasily switches the opening tactics on his own opponent and utilizes his own strategy. He plays bishop g5, and of course, you know, for some reason, you know, the guys from, from Latin America, uh, they love to play g6 systems against London, yeah? You don't see them playing t5 often. Um, I saw only Martinez switch to d5 recently. Because he analyzed this stuff, obviously, and he realized, you know, d5 is like probably better. Uh, but g6 is a very fighting uh, thing. And of course, the thing is that white takes, yeah. That's what makes it Trompovsky. Um, you don't allow black to protect the knight with the bishop, and you go for the structure. And structurally wise, 
why structure is superior. Um, so let's look at this. Bishop d6, uh, first line. Knight goes to f6, pretty standards. Usually the way I play these positions, I usually play g3, bishop g2, and then knight e2, c4, knight c3, and I try to keep this bishop in defense of the king. So, but c4 is, is um, also very reasonable. I'm just curious where white is planning to play bishop e7. And a5, I think, is uh, wrong. Um, see, if you play a move like a5, what makes this a potential weakness is that whenever you play c6, white plays d5, these pawns are kind of loose, okay? Uh, that's why the computer plays a5, put the bishop on d6, maximum the computer plays is plays a6, knight f6, and just waits for white to, you know, push d5. The computer keeps the structure like this. Um, and it makes a lot of sense, okay? Because bishop is being protected by this pawn. It's like in a lot of uh, games uh, in Queen's Gambit, you know? The pawn on c7 is not vulnerable to d5 break. Okay, just keep that in mind. Because if you play a5, this is the side where white is stronger. Because of this double pawn formation, black is a little bit stronger on the king side. So that's where you should play, actually. h5, f5, put the knight on g4. Potentially there is f6, g5, or knight on e4, actually, and go for g5 break at some point, thanks to this pair of bishops looking this way. Um, after a5, it looks like, you know... Yeah, so see, the problem for white is that bishop here is doing nothing. The bishop here would be actually, you know, hitting this guy and trying to provoke black into c6, and then you play d5. So queen c2, still advantage, okay, c6, knight d5, black is trying to set up blockade on the square, which is very reasonable. And I think white has to, okay, the knight going to c5 immediately, which is why you don't put the bishop here, because after knight c5, you give white a tempo. And if you trade, now this guy got a square. And this pawn structure is actually starting to tell. Actually, not this square, yeah? The knight can potentially go to this square. This square. You'll be hitting everything. The knight is there protected. If the knight gets to d6, taking so many squares from black rooks, it's just huge advantage for white. Not easy to achieve, yeah? Knight d4 first, okay. Oh, just trades. Interest. Oh, he takes with a pawn. Oh, that's a big no. That's a big no. You should take with the queen, yeah. He was probably afraid of white's doubling, tripling, then taking on d5. Yeah, but queen e6 had to be played, yeah. And uh, even queen e5, I think. Because now you want to move your knights to e4. For some reason, the computer thinks black is worse. Probably because of this. But to me, it looks like very close to equal. Yeah, I think in the long run, you know, the computer says it's plus 0.9, but it seems like black's fine here. Is this a weakness? Um, yeah. And that's the that advantage of having a double pawn. This pawn protects the king, and this pawn ramps the house, yeah? See, it's equal. So, yeah, um, but the, the problem is, if you take with the pawn on e6, like he did, now this king will be eternally weak. And some point in white plays e4, this pawn will be weak. And this structure actually happened in the very famous uh, game between uh, 24th game of Kasparov versus Karpov, almost exact material. Uh, and Karpov could not hold the draw. If he if he made a draw, he he would uh, Gary would lose his title, okay? Because Karpov was plus one before the last game. But Gary would dance around this weak pawn with his queen and bishop and rook, and eventually, in time trouble, Karpov blunders, and the seal the position for the adjournment where Kasparov's position was one, okay? Just thanks to this only, only weakness, okay? It was an amazing game. I highly recommend you guys to go over it when you get time. So, 
Let's see how Vasily does it. E4, G3, because Vasily knows his classics, okay? Knight of six, and rookie one. He does not take the pawn, because uh, then white will be tied up. He keeps the pawn alive, but he does not give black the opportunity to go active. And black makes immediate mistake. He just was willing to give up the spawn. So why not play e5, yeah? And just invite white to take the spawn again. Why not? Was he afraid of bishop f1? Good question. But you have queen d3 here. And now it's a draw. Yeah, see, it's kind of interesting. You see, white can take the spawn. He plays rook e1. And now black does not give the spawn and improves the pawn position. Very strange. He plays queen f5, attacking the queen, attacking the pawn. And white goes into this endgame. It's still equal. It's still equal, but uh, not much time, yeah? One minute on the clock and not easy. And rook d4, apparently a big mistake. It's a big mistake to leave queen alive with the weak king. Uh, queen d4 had to be played. Queen d4, you know, eliminate this um, attacker, centralize your queen, and black's fine. So what does he miss? Vasily misses b3, queen f5. Uh, the slightly better position, but rook e7. Queen e7. So black is very close to uh, surviving this, yeah? B4, okay. Centralizing, yes. Knight e4, okay, check. Oh, passive. Uh, oh, that was too passive, yeah? Knight d2. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, in these endgames, um, Sometimes it's very important to go very active. It looks scary to leave your knight like this and king like seems to be mated. But the thing is there is no mate because the queen controls the checking square and knight controls the retreating squares. And if you take this pawn, it's trade and queen b2, draw. My god. King h5 and there is no mate. There is no mate here. King runs to here, so you cannot give the bishop. Uh, queen d8 with the idea of queen h4 mate, but then check, take, and check, and check, and black is equal. Okay, far from simple. Knight of six looks like, you know, why I just don't stand, yeah? But you know, the knight is extremely passive here, and he doesn't help with this defense of the king. So queen d8, and suddenly, you know, black is in trouble, because if you take this pawn, you lose this pawn with check. Then you potentially lose this pawn, but also this king is in the mating net. Yep. Wow, Vasily plays this part brilliantly. Queen d4, terrible. Not terrible, but knight g4 first, yeah, because of this check. Because you can't even go here, because now white can just trade the queens thanks to this far pass pawn, just win. So king f8, bishop goes back. If you take here, white takes here. Knight e4, runs into check, and a5, yeah. c4, a6, and queen e3, beautiful. Bishop d1, and uh, black resigns because, because the bishop goes here, the king goes here, grabs the pawn. Oh, and also you're not in time. White queens, yeah. Yeah, very hard fought game, but um, Vasily managed to actually Capitalize on his opponent's mistakes. Good job. And the last um, rapid game. And we see another Tromkowski. 
And Vasily just goes for the um, symmetric pawn structure. I think white should have taken the six here, because if you don't take, if you play like this, absolutely nothing for white. There's absolutely nothing for white. Nothing. I mean, I cannot even begin to think where white can possibly have an advantage here. Um, okay. Will I upload both for yesterday? Yes, I will. Um, okay, good. Um, Will I upload vote? Yes, I will. Uh, white chess tournament have such prize division like in a classic single sports tournament. The winner gets about 20-50% of all tournament prizes because they want to be more democratic here. Okay. Actually, that's why World Cups are so popular because it's a socialist uh, uh, system prize structure where everybody gets prizes because it's a premier event. You know, people have been trying to play qualifying events in their respective zonals all over the world. So the World Cup is like this jewel of um, democratic chess principles because, as you have seen, um, number 100 seeds are playing top seeds and actually able to eliminate those seeds, okay? And if you get eliminated, you know, you get prizes. Imagine if the top seeds who get eliminated, they would get no prize. Do you understand how much of the terrible cry out you will hear okay so you need the prizes at every stage so in case the top seeds they get eliminated you know they don't cry f cry foul okay so they also get some money and it's not just about top seeds imagine if you come like if you're a feeder master who managed to qualify to the world cup you spend a whole bunch of money you know to travel the whole world to play the world cup you know, it's not easy because they don't pay for your tickets. They don't pay for your hotel. You have to pay everything. But the money that you get, if you meet the Super Grandmaster in the first round, you're not going to meet Super Grandmaster. They see you into the second round, but it doesn't matter. You meet some strong player in the first round, you get eliminated. You know, all your expenses are paid off and you had the experience of a lifetime to play in the World Cup and you have, you earn some money as well. This is an incredibly popular tournament. Nobody wants to this tournament to disappear, you know. That's why people love it, and uh, you know it's extremely uh, viewer friendly because you have huge battles, you know. Because people have seen the top GMs, seeded GMs, fall, like we saw in this event already, and we've seen some unknown people actually kick their ass. We actually have seen the world champion Magnus Carlsen try to win this World Cup before when he was world champion and he got eliminated. We have never seen Fabiano Corano reach the finals before in this tournament. And he's been playing chess since he was six and now he's what, 32 or something, right? He had a birthday recently and he never won. He never even got to the finals. You know how strong this tournament is if you have world champion Magnus Carlsen didn't get to the final? You don't have Fabiana Kurana not get to the final? Imagine, they all got eliminated. This is incredibly democratic and super, super strong, unpredictable tournament. And that's why people love it. And that's why you need to encourage this image of being highly popular tournament among the elite and uh, the, the democratic masses. You know? So that's why you need these prizes. Okay. Uh, I had dressed rating with a party of 84. Thank you so much. Sorry, I missed it. I was doing the recap. Um, um, yes, I will be re-uploading videos for recaps. I actually um, put them on YouTube, but I haven't published them yet. Okay, I, I, will, I will do that. You're also including the women's tournament prize as well. Yes, uh, the women's tournament, they do have traditionally half the amount of prizes for the men's tournament. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, it, it's life, yeah. Um, it, it is unfair, I agree. It is unfair, but of course, all the eyes are mainly on the men's uh, World Cup event, yeah. I, you see, I, I don't have energy to cover women's events uh, because there's so much happening in the men's events. 
I, but that's the commentator's job, okay? Uh, the commentator's job, they have to uh, look at both. They should actually have separate commentators. I don't understand why they have only one team, yeah? That's covering both events. They should have actually two teams. Maybe they do, I don't even know. Uh, it would make a lot of sense if they have separate teams commentating Men's World Cup and Women's World Cup. So if they are, you should just go there and ask all these questions about the difference in prizes and everything. And uh, I'm curious about the reaction <laughs> because, you know, it's not easily explainable why there is such a huge uh, price differential between men and women. Okay, so um, let's go here. What else did I miss? Um, okay, was Naka game reviewed? No, we're just getting there. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, I, I did post some recaps, so you can you can watch them. So bishop d3. So white is just going for a draw. He realizes he lost the match after the previous game. And he just wants to play this, and this is better for black, okay? I see we play c5, although queen d6, a5, and then c5 at some point is perfectly reasonable and playable. c5 is just... Oh, now we see white's intention, rook g1. Okay. So I take that back. Henrique is not playing for a draw. He is trying to go for his last attack, last attack of the ants against the Isengard. Except that Vice is not Isengard, obviously. Um, so take, take, and g5 is a threat. Or is it, yeah? Nope, no threat. Queen b6, hitting these guys, preparing bishop d6 straight of this bishop, opening the e5 potentially hitting this guy because see in order for this attack to be successful you sort of need coordination between your pieces if this king goes on h1 then yeah then i can believe it. then i can believe it because you have queen rooks immediately helping each other but the, with the king going one it's kind of hard to believe this okay g5 okay grab grab what is the threat this pawn is not coming this knight has no moves because this pawn is hanging Queen needs at least three moves to get to the G file, and then black plays G6, and then what? Yeah. So, rook fc8, very reasonable. Black wants to play maybe bishop f8, g6, and uh, first of all, stops the long castling. 95. Okay, inaccuracy by Vasily. But okay, rook c7 is reasonable. Knight of three looks like you can take this pawn now. Yeah, and he did. Good. And take another pawn. See, the computer is blood, blood, uh, cold blooded monster. He plays knight e8 here and protects the pawn with the knight. Bishop f8 is human way of playing. I, I like human way of playing. Rook c8. And now black is ready to start counter-attacking. Yeah. See, he can't even play king g2 here. Queen d2, creating the... There's not even threat because queen g5 runs into knight e8. So he takes, knight takes. Oh, he protects and... Okay. Yeah, knight e8 actually makes more sense just to double protect this, prepare f6. But knight d7, okay. Um, the point is, if you play queen g5, maybe there is a middle play here at g6, if the bishop is gone, also this pawn is hanging, yeah, so you have to play this, g6, yep. This bishop needs to be traded, so the rook can finally enter the c1 rank. But if you don't trade it, then black king is safe, queen f4, wait. Suddenly it is equal, but equal is not good enough. White needs to win this game. Oh, he wants to repeat the position. Vaisir <laughs> needs a draw to qualify. He plays b5, he plays for a win. Okay, that's a little bit, you know, bloodthirsty. But okay, because he is Vasily, you know, 
Yeah. Oh, he misses this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think Vice should just allow him a draw. Because he, he qualifies then. Yeah. Rook f3 needed to play. He, he, he missed this part. He missed the part where if you take with the king, check. If you take with the queen, take the queen. Yeah. And this just resigns. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Cristobal got you know very upset. You see how the loss can affect your psyche. Yeah, because this game Cristobal played far below his level. You know, the previous game he defended magnificently. Yeah, and then he made a couple of inaccuracies. He played passively instead of actively. Knight d2, and you know, showing a lot of respect for Vasily. But if you want to uh, have a quality game, you need to play the best moves. And you need to find them and you, you you cannot have too much respect yeah certain respect is good but you need to you need to place you know the right move in the position if the right move is to play aggressively you play aggressively if the right move is to play passively you play passively you have to play the position you cannot allow, allow this presence of you know this greatness on the other side of the board to affect you okay it's chess in chess you're equals that's the beauty of chess uh, all right, so, yeah, and this, the second game, Cristobal played way below his abilities. Just, just wanted to point that out. He allowed that loss to affect his mind. And uh, it's obvious, you know, to professionals, it is obvious. Okay, so Vaisia plays the Chinese guy. Um, next tie breaks were David Howell, who beat the Burkic Ante. Who is pretty strong grandmaster, but David uh, Howell has a lot more experience. Um, all right, I, I'm gonna do all tie breaks because I had a little nap, so I, I am not sleepy. Okay, so I'm gonna go over all tie breaks. Don't worry. All right, so we see in detail. Okay, compared to yesterday, yesterday I was a little bit too sleepy, so I didn't do every game. I did most important games, but I was a little bit sleepy, so I didn't go into detail. So Italian, very safe, uh, very safe uh, opening for white, but a5 and bishop e7. See what black does? He invites white to uh, decide where the bishop goes, this diagonal, this diagonal. But if you go this diagonal, then you stop the spin, okay? Uh, it's nothing uh, super scary, but white has no advantage. Yeah. Now white has to play something like c3, rook e1, d4, and just you know allow for black to trade the knights, and it's equal. But uh, there is this thing knight h5. Yeah. And if you play bishop g3, then black has a pair of bishops. I think that you know personally you should just take this guy. And um, is g3 really that bad? Just denying the square? It cannot be that bad. Come on. Rook here, rook e1, because if you play king h8, d4, and the threat is knight e5. And then you put the knight on e3, like in London system, or you play bishop f1, that's equal. Actually, white is better. So, but if you play knight f6, First of all, d4 anyway, yeah. Take, take, knight g4, what is this? This looks equal. Queen b3, knight b4. I'll probably just play bishop f1 here. And then kick this knight out, yeah. And it's equal game. Absolutely equal game. Um, because I really hate when this knight gets, gets to f4. Because that's like Spanish reverse. If your knight gets here, then g3, knight h3 unclear okay uh, so he plays bishop g3 but the problem is that um, black now has a pair of bishops oh he takes an f pawn oh f pawn f pawn is a fighting move it's actually very interesting um, so white wants to play on the f file he wants black to play f5 and with this pawn formation, you're no longer scared of f5, yeah, because you have double g pawns to protect your king. Okay, 
Makes sense. However, when you take with an F-pawn, your center is weakened. So, with the weakened center, it actually makes sense for black to start playing here, like preparing c6d5, because this king will be not safe. See? If you take with an h-pawn, black probably plays here, but if you take with an f-pawn, black probably switches to the center. So let's see. Knight e7, c6, yep. And queen d6. Yeah, I don't understand why he doesn't play bishop g7, probably doesn't want to allow knight h4 and doubling of the rooks. Uh, so rook d8, queen f2, but black is ready, yeah? Bishop c8 and d5, that's it. Yeah, David is understanding of chess, of course, is uh, is huge, yeah? He's, he's been commentating chess for many years now. He's seen a lot of games, he's seen a lot of plans. However, he misses here uh, a pawn, yeah? That's what you get when you keep this bishop hanging. So the only move was king h8, and the white plays knight h4, bishop g7, and you cannot take this pawn because of bishop e8, yeah? So, but you needed to move the king, because uh, your white plays knight d2, bishop is hanging, bishop g5 runs into h4. And the problem is, check, and you cannot play king g7 because of check, but if you play this, white takes, white, white has a pawn up, rook f6 is a threat. So, but bishop g7, just take, and queen e2. And important pawn is gone, bishop is going back, advantage white. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. This is kind of crazy that white missed this. Yeah, he plays h4. Okay, uh, also knight h2, knight g4, h5, also viable. g4, g5, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, come on, h5 was necessary. You need h5 to stop f5 and put the knight here to get this access to f5 square. You absolutely need to play h5 in this position. I mean, if you play g4, then you get d5 for sure. Um, so you don't have time, yeah. Knight h2, um, d5 immediately, but also king. Yeah, knight on h2 does nothing, because you run to f5. So you're not in time. But you need to play h5, and if king h8, then knight h4. Um, maybe even immediately. But then d5. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, take, 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 take. Ah, g5. You don't have knight f5. Ah, because the bishop is hanging. Yeah, okay. This is advantage white. Uh, advantage black, obviously. Yeah, because this pawn is weak. Pair of bishops. Bishop can always go to this diagonal later. Yeah, advantage black. Whoops. So, what was the right move? The right move was to take on g6. Okay. You must take with the pawn. And now this bishop is uh, now queen e2, knight h4. Still advantage black, yeah? Superior pawn structure, no real threats. So, yeah. He plays this. And, <laughs> and black plays d5. Take, take. Take, f5. Ooh. Ooh, the a5 pawn. Wow. Well, if you're gonna suffer, why not grab the pawn? Good job, man. I like that attitude. I always say that. If you don't know how you lose and you're given a pawn, and if you don't lose immediately, and you have chances to defense, you just should grab the pawn and not be scared, okay? Because you're suffering for a pawn. And if you're able to defend, you win the game. Okay. So grab, grab. Bishop h5. <laughs> he grabs the pawn back. Okay. See, no knight f5. No knight e3, knight g3. Nobody cares. We care about the pawns. See, that's the grandmaster's play. Yeah. They, they, they care about the pawns, man. But there's also a correct move, of course. You have to bring the knight back. This is apparently incorrect. Because... After the trade, knight e5, if you take the queen, a rook and bishop is hanging, and you get knight c5 and a5. Or knight b7, yeah? Advantage white. Yeah, 
Uh, how come he missed 95? Uh, that's crazy. He plays queen e2. See, he, one move and the game is gone. When the opponent has a pair of bishops and you have the chance to trade one of them, you should immediately grab it. The question is, what happens if he takes with the bishop? This is probably a better way, yeah? And the response would be queen f4. You don't care if black takes this pawn. Because first of all, knight f5, knight f5, knight f7 is coming. But second of all, you can even take the bishop and play this position with the opposite color bishops. Because just to demonstrate this point, this is, yeah, knight f7 is winning, but you can take here and check. See, you win also. Uh, because black king is way too open. So taking with the bishop on a fade, probably not. Yeah, so rook e5, knight e5, and it's a draw. He plays um, queen e2, and after. And black does not play knight f5. Amazing. Amazing! Because after this move, black is winning. Yeah. Okay, queen c7, okay, also logical. Potentially b5 with the threats, potentially knight d5 coming in. Still advantage black, yeah. And after this, it's finally lost. You need to trade the rooks. You need to trade off your opponent's attacking potential. That's what needed to be done. Black's position is obviously preferable because of many dark holes in the white position. Absolutely terrible bishop now. If the bishop was on e4, good chances to draw. The bishop on e2 sucks. So he plays knight f3, finally knight f5 played, knight g3, and white is just down in exchange. In addition to having much worse position. Rook f3 winning immediately. For some reason, they don't see this, because they have less than one minute on the clock. But black misses the immediate win. But he is winning anyway. Rook e7, doubling the rooks, rook goes to e2. Rook f2, finally he sees it, good job. Okay, first game, really good. Uh, really good performance. Um, and second game, second game when you need a draw and you're facing Sicilian, you play c3. Good job, man. Wait, wait, what did I, no. What the hell? People, please don't challenge me. I'm doing a stream, man. Like, what the hell? Jesus. All right. You play c3, and it's very solid chess. Yeah. But, okay. Uh, strategically, white position was in huge danger. He had to use every tactical possibility. When he missed the chance to take the pawn on f7, yeah. Usually when you miss a chance to score the goal, the opponent scores the goal for you. All right, so d5, okay. Knight f6, oh. But, okay, d4 anyway, take, check. Ah, bishop d7, bishop c4. Okay, this is probably some prep. Bishop on d7 sucks. But why don't you just take this pawn and play? G6, is there's queen b3? Yeah, it's a little bit worse for black, yeah? Bishop is not that great on d7. So he plays this, this, queen d4, a4. Perfect relocation for the bishop. And apparently this is incorrect. So black is playing prepared line and and black got full compensation. Except that this is bad. Um, wow. What a what a position. I, I've never seen this. No, but bishop d6 makes a lot of sense because you play knight c6, you need bishop d6 to protect your queen. Okay? And if the queen moves. Castles, castles, queen c7. I like black position actually. Then knight e5, you hit the bishop. 
d2, a3, take here. But it looks very equal, yeah? Take, take. Yeah, white is extremely solid. But this would definitely be interesting, yeah? It's a fight, yeah? I mean, if you trade, uh, you manage to trade. Uh, hmm. And then just equal after queen e1. Damn. Nice try. But knight a6 doesn't seem right. Because white can just give this pawn. Gets very nice square for the knight. Very passive. Queen b6. Come on, man. Queen b6. Do this. Uh, now white is better again because he got all the squares in the world. Beautiful bishop, beautiful knight. Black is very passive. Yeah, white is better. Queen five. White is very it's just better, man. This is not the position you need to get uh, when you're playing for win. Grab the pawn. Blunders knight d6, and blunders the check and resigns. Yep. You know, in hindsight, this whole line is probably not the right choice, but yeah. Guys, if you need a draw and you see a Sicilian C3, perfect choice. Yeah. It just almost guarantees you the draw. Very smart way. Very, very smart play by, by, um, by, by uh, David. Because, and that's the reason why you don't want to lose with whites ever. Okay, you lose with white, it, it, it's like you don't deserve to win the match, okay? All right, so that was David Howell's match. Um, next, we got Safarli versus Yesipenko. You know, I, you know, first time I saw Safarli when he was just a youngster, he was a teenage kid, yeah? So I still, whenever I see his name, I still think of him as a teenage kid, but... You know, recently he played in Dortmund Open and he's like all grown up and I was like, I couldn't recognize him. Uh, so he is no longer the junior, yeah? But Yisipenko still is sort of. Okay, Italian, safe. But nothing special, yeah? Take, take, a4, bishop e6, knight e3, rook e8. But this is a little bit better for white. Uh, because of the pawn structure. So let's see this. Um, suddenly it's plus one. We see the structure a lot in the uh, Rosalima type of positions, okay? And also in the Spanish um, Spanish game. But white, I like white's play because usually black has a bishop to counter white's f4. You put the bishop here, play f5. Here black has no bishop. And you need to stop the f4. If you don't stop the f4, white pawn structure with the knight on e3, second knight going here, you just get free attack. Okay, so let's see it. F4. So, so there was a problem in the opening for black. Okay, black did not solve the problems. Um, white played really tricky though, because there is never c4 break. There is no b5, because you fix, you put your pawn here. And this, this, this thing is coming. So he's trying to sack the knight. But with the double pawns, I don't think it's going to work. Take, take. Rook d3, knight c4. Yep. And these two knights control these two squares. This does not look right at all. Yeah, see what the computer does? He plays c6 and b5 and he fights with the control of some squares at least. That makes a lot of sense because if you play rook d1, you can take the central pawn, some sort of uh, compensation, yeah. But rook h3 does not look right at all. Rook f3, king takes, good job, king takes, not queen. Um, second rook goes to d3, stuff is traded, g5. Not only white has extra piece with terrible black pawn structure, but white also has the attack. My god. 
zero chance for black zero resigns yeah all right terrible game by black but uh, great preparation by white for some reason doesn't return me to this match makes me look for search for it and now Isipenko plays black they both e4 e5 players so this was curious and white plays a3 and it's not something new but bishop b5 is very interesting uh, okay queen g5 very aggressive a6 looks correct the bishop a4 you take on c3 queen e4 take bishop d7 okay let me show you this line important line okay check you try and take the bishop but then bishop d7 and thanks to the spin you recover the piece and black is better because pawn structure is better so that's why white plays knight d5 this is probably prep by the way king takes and white king is very unsafe bishop h3 bishop c5 rook e8 coming very unsafe position a4 first line and b4 black's trying to trap this guy so far one two three four five six one two three four five white has extra pawn but he is gonna lose this pawn because of bishop c5 yeah and he plays incorrectly actually he should play d3 here but then bishop c5 okay eight and then it's a draw so black black knows his theory black calculated really well and he achieved the draw he achieved it uh, not only draw black is better <clears throat> because white's underdeveloped b3 yep and a6 is a huge mistake must take and play bishop d2 but i think at this point safari realized he is not going to win this match and usually when that realization hits um and you see the current position you have zero chances for a win usually that that's where you just conserve the energy and just admit the fact that uh, the match is gone and he plays a6 but the problem is that you should not lose this okay still make a draw okay fight for a draw because it's still rating points it's not classical elo but it is rapid event unbelievable it just gives him everything 94 completely winning why oh because a7 okay eight and this knight is trapped okay okay so black is fine with the draw apparently Oh, I mean, white is fine with the draw, finally. And black is fine with the draw too, but... But he's missing everything in the world. Knight c1, rook e8 is coming, so big problem. All right, fair enough. Uh, this match actually showed very clear distinction between two grandmasters. Isipenko is just way too strong for Safarli. Way too strong. All right, Giri versus Nesterov. Very interesting. I haven't covered this match at all, but Nesterov made two, you know, two draws versus Giri in the classical time format. How well they remember the match against Carlson really well. Things like that really come to really are remembered. Okay, I don't remember every freaking detail, but I do remember the match, I do remember the atmosphere, I do remember me playing at the board, I remember the lines, I remember the prep. Um, so I do remember. Yeah. And my personal life was probably at the peak at that point. I'm not going to make comments, but, you know, I was very satisfied. Of course, it was temporary and then the shitload of problems started later, yeah. But at that particular point, I was satisfied with my life. Um, which is very helpful when you play a top level event. But it was like, you know, 
All right, let's not go there. All right, so Grunfeld's Anish playing the opening. Only the best theoreticians play, and Anish is the best theoretical player. And uh, let's see, Bishop B5, Rook C8, okay. And according to the computer, White is a little bit better, but. Incorrect, but immediately see immediately getting the bishop, who is the bishop is closed by his pawn formation. You immediately transfer the bishop uh, somewhere here, but probably bishop d7. A4 makes sense, but because this diagonal is under control, white doesn't really have a5 play. So rook e8, temporary pin, and. You can grab the pawn actually, but bishop d7 is very safe. And black is better because pair of bishops, you cannot get to this pawn. Rook is coming to a4, b4, hitting this guy. Passive knight, problems white. I would consider playing knight c3 in this position to stop rook a4, but the problem is then this, okay? All your pieces are here, and black starts the attack. This is actually a big problem. So that's why, you know, black is better, okay? Rook a4, correct. And if you have to play bishop d2, bishop e3 is a perfect square for the bishop. Controls this square, you know, provides pressure, closes the file. But after bishop d2, it does not look good. Um, yeah, queen h4 required calculation which I guess black wasn't ready to do. So he plays this and queen a7. Further idea to play this, ready for the trade because black just takes the pawn. Okay. Bishop here and white blunders. Oh, it's such a simple blunder too, yeah? He blunders rook e3, come on, man. Take bishop f8, and this is hanging. You cannot. Pfft. White blundered in one move, and it's game over. Yeah, queen c4 is a very academic way of playing chess. The computer ways to play queen b2, lock this knight out, and play for a mate. But queen c4 is academic, it's also very good enough. Good enough because you just have this juicers coming. I'm gonna use Naka's terminology. The juicers are coming and you cannot stop them, man. Rook and Bishop and these juicers, pfft, yeah. So, white blundered in a slightly worse position, but it was only slightly worse. He blundered. Uh, okay. So this was the um, Geary match, and then he drew the second game, obviously. And it was a quick draw. Okay, I like Geary's style. Plays with white, very safe, solid, bishop d4, centralized, trades, <laughs> trades. Oh, not even trades, just repeat the position, beautiful. Beautiful, uh, saving the energy, you know, for the next match, going home early. Uh, perfect. You save the energy and you prepare for the next match. Okay, makes sense. All right, uh, so that was Giri. Next we have Fresine versus uh, Abbasov. And Abbasov won. Abbasov is this new, sort of new, um, Right, I'm trying to find the way to get this. Okay, fine. Um, I'll just scroll and click. All right, this was key game. Okay. Juicer grabbers. Actually, I like that. Grab the juice. Why are pawns called juicers? You know, this original term came from XQC, who taught this term to Nakamura, and Nakamura really liked it, and he started using it. Okay. 
there is not 81 games. This is tie breaks. A lot of games were finished before. Okay. Maybe right. I tried to right click. It doesn't work. The only way to do this is to go not into the games, uh, not into the selections uh, results, but games and go game by game. But seeing all those lines, you know, my eyes hurt. So I'm just gonna go by the match. It's okay. I spent like 15 seconds scrolling, but I, I, it's worth it because to me, you know, this is organized way of doing this. All right, D4, D5. Okay, Carlsbad, but this is the main Carlsbad with Queen C2, and White does not allow Bishop F5. If you do not allow Bishop F5, then White is a little bit better, and also this setup indicates White's plan going Knight E2 F3. So let's see, Knight E2, because Knight E2 makes more sense than Knight F3. Okay, I I, I always thought this plan gives White a little bit of advantage. I used this uh, plan to play versus Van der Stern in 94 candidates in FIDE. That was my first candidates match and I prepared for it and I prepared with Judith Polger and Susan Polger. It was in Budapest. We didn't have much time, but it was a time I still remember to this day. It was not bad. Um, you know, and that's where we came up with this idea because he always played uh, Queen's Gambit at that time. Uh, Van der Steren was very underrated uh, grandmaster of his time. He was a huge theoretical player. He knew his lines, and um, but we de we developed this idea. But it's not like we developed this idea. This idea is old and ancient. Yeah, but we sort of analyzed it and um, went into the middle game and decided like when to move each pawn. It's very tricky. You have to know when you can play f3. E4, or when you can play a3 and switch to the queen side, or when you can do both, or when you can play g4. This is an extremely tricky situation, okay? I still remember, but I remember this line very fondly. Okay, knight a6, a3, knight c7. So instead of knight d7, knight f8, knight e6, black plays knight a6, knight c7, makes a lot of sense. Knight also protects the pawn. So you can eventually play c5, which black should play c5, c4, and b5, because that's where pawn majority is, okay? Why white plays f3, b4? Because he has pawn majority in the center, and you have to use your pawn majority. So rook d1, knight e6, yes, knight h5 is recommended because otherwise you're pinned, okay? And your bishop disrupts the normal flow of your position. That's why um, it is recommended to trade this bishops and then develop your other bishop and wait for white to play f3, e4. Okay, small advantage. But knight e6 is also possible. Rook e1. Again, white prepares this f3, potentially queen d2, bishop b1. But you don't play f3 immediately because then you run to c5. Knight h5. Okay. And knight g3 is very, very interesting. Yeah, see, the first line is queen d2 and then knight g3 or f3, yeah? Knight g3, very interesting. Um, and the thing is, you probably have to take this guy because if you don't take this guy, then this guy is perfect place. Okay, I'll explain. Because now you play f3 and queen can move to f2, which is much better square than d2 because queen here is is allowing this uh, whole push okay and you can't really play c5 here that's the biggest problem for tactical reasons in addition to in addition to strategic but tactical reasons is that you take here it's kind of actually incredible yeah check first take take knight is hanging if you play knight a4 it's uh Wow, bishop f5 actually. Damn. And the idea is you play e4, rook b5, and bishop d3. Huh. Mr. Pizza Eater, please refrain from uh, challenging more or I'm gonna block you, man. You're disrupting my mindset. I'm, my mindset is set on commentating these games. 
okay see it's still not easy uh, because we're getting move we're getting closer to that game and um, in that game maybe it's a win maybe it's not because if black trades again knights bishops and gives up these two pawns for one pawn then the rook end game three versus four is a is a draw yeah so that's the that's what you should be thinking i got the, to the end game i see three versus four so for me to survive i need to trade all these pieces bishops knights and give up these two pawns okay so that's what you're thinking should be uh wait what did i do okay no uh oh my god all right so we've been looking at this game yeah oh this is the game all right sorry this is the end position so knight g3 so that's why black takes and he plays h5 and he misses e4 yeah very interesting you know usually you prepare e4 but if you play f3 here and e4 then this pawn is weak that's why black plays h5 <clears throat> Fresene is a very strategically oriented player his understanding of positional play is great i played him many many times i think we have all draws in our games um i never beat this guy <clears throat> Uh, some games were very close, but um, again, extremely solid, very tough grandmaster from France. Um, but e4, and now we have a lot of tactics. You have to take this pawn, yeah, because if you take on e4, this is terrible. White is fully prepared for d5. Knight is really badly prepared for d5. Everything is underdeveloped. H5 is now actually a potential liability, because if you protect this pawn by playing g6. Knight can go here with the queen, okay? So you have gotta take this pawn. Queen a4. There's only one move. Queen c5. And bishop f1. The knight is hanging again. And he finds the only move. I think it's like probably some analysis or something. I would not be surprised if you know there were some games on this. Because black plays like perfect defense, yeah. If knight is 6 e d5 just lost. Knight c2 is the only move d4 take take and black is equal amazing so how did he lose this very interesting question because double pawns means f4 or 5 doesn't really work so how can you lose this game rook d8 okay take take and he plays b5 and i'm not so sure about b5 so you guys remember we looked to early today at Ivanchuk versus cristobal where cristobal played b5 b4 c5 in a very similar structure and he lost yeah so i don't know about this um but it's logical yeah pawn majority gotta push yeah this is uh probably incorrect I still think you need to push your pawn majority. So c5 should probably be played. Then in rook d6, b4. And if f5, you can just take it. You don't care about this bishop here. Because there are no threats. Yeah? Because rook and queen and bishop is not enough. Rook e8 creating the threat of trading the queens. King h2. Queen e3. And queen d5 runs into bishop e6, and black's fine. So that's what black should have played. I'm very surprised he didn't play this. Because, you know, bishop supports the c4 now. White has to do something. I'm very, very surprised he didn't play c5. It's so logical. Instead, he plays this, and bishop does not belong here at all. I don't know why bishop g4 is played. He was probably afraid of f5, and he wanted to protect this, but there is no queen g5 check. Queen is a great defender. And now white is going to potentially put the bishop here. So he plays e5. And now it's advantage white. Small, but unpleasant. Rook d6. Yep. Pawn is hanging. How do we protect this pawn? Rook c8 runs into queen a5. You cannot play c5 because pawn is hanging. Bishop b5. Bishop b5. So h4 was the only move. It was also the first move that comes to mind. And the idea is that if you take this king g7, potential rook h8, and some uh, something here, but mm, I don't know. But queen f2, yeah, that's a problem. 
because uh, pushes the queen away. Queen g3 protects everything. Yeah. But may maybe not everything, yeah. Queen g3. Rook h8 and rook d8. Hmm. Counter play, for sure. Rook d6, rook c8. Yeah. Counter play, because white king is very, very open. So, that is actually one of the advices you guys need uh, to know. You know, always try to open your opponent's king. It will help with your defense. Because if, if you stay passive, like in this game, See, he plays queen c5. I don't know where that queen going. He wants to play b4. But the problem is bishop d3. And now this thing. And then bishop e4. And black is lost. Just like that. f5 coming, b4, and f5. Okay. So he plays rook h8, but there's also this. Which was the main idea, which is why the computer plays rook e8. Yeah, I think we, I think he missed rook e6, because after rook e6, h4, take, check, resigns. Yeah, because if queen goes here, it's check and mate. So the king has to go to f8, but then it's check, 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 check. And uh, bishop f5, and bishop f7. There was a mate probably somewhere, but okay, it's fine. It's completely winning. Yeah. Check and g5, black resides. So that's what happens, okay? This is the key defender for black, and white eliminates it and wins the game. And this does not help. Probably he should have taken it, but the problem was uh, this queen f7, okay? Undefensible position. So uh, black. Managed to lose this game in two moves, pretty much. He played queen a7, queen c5. Wrong activation on the wrong uh, uh, part of the board. Okay, he should activate his queen here. Put the queen here. All right. So this was the match between uh, Fr uh, Fresne. He had second game, but he did not manage to. Strike back and he lost. All right, let's. Where is it? Here. All right, let's take a quick look. So, first thing I play is white, he needs to win. And he plays knight of 3 g3, and that's not exactly the opening you play to win the game. And e5, I like the choice. And d6, not d5, but d6. Very, very solid play for by black. White has to play something like this because you have to play f4. And this is a little bit risky, but but you know white has pair of bishops, but you don't have knights. You really need the knight in this position. It's sort of simple for black to play this position now. Take rook d8, black has simple plan, attack the spawn, knight e5, and trade more stuff. Yeah. 93 tactics work because if c4 you attack this bishop uh, but if you don't then b5 and uh, and he missed bishop bc4 and this is just dead draw okay and black is better black is pawn pawn up white offers the draw because black only black can win this all right that was first in a match um, you see how different people approach differently uh, their, 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 if they win the first game and how they approach the second game, yeah? The people who approach the second game like very solidly, trade everything, they qualify because they make a draw. Um, all right, that was what? Safarli versus Sisipenko, Nestrov with Sof, Resines with their one in the meantime. Okay, Vokatur versus Vala Kitin. We can skip this match. This was extremely interesting match. As you can see, uh, Grishuk opponent actually managed to go all the way until the Blitz uh, runoff tie breaks. Yeah? So let's see. And he managed to come back twice. Incredible. Against Grishuk. 
Absolutely incredible. Um, did you analyze Richard report game? No. Um, okay. Fine. I'll try to do as many as I can. Maybe not every 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 single match. We'll see. We'll see how how I feel energy wise. Okay. If I have energy to go, I'll, I'll do it. Because I'm not gonna do recaps tomorrow. I'm gonna do the recaps after the second game of the third round. Okay. So tomorrow I get the break. But I'll do the recap of both classical games on after tomorrow. All right. So because I need to you know recuperate. All right, so we have Karakhan, Grishuk playing versus Karakhan, and you should know that Grishuk plays Karakhan himself for many, many years. So he obviously knows what he's doing. And let's see what he decides to play with white. And he plays this very old line. But he plays short castle. Ah, knight of five. Yeah, this is ancient line. This line was analyzed when I was uh, playing the candidates. Uh, black has to be actually pretty, pretty accurate or he risks getting to worse position because of his double pawn formation, okay? So let's see, rook e8, take, take, queen d8, okay, rook e2, 94 is correct because of this pawn, you don't have knight moves yet. So g3, but that allows... This is incorrect. Small incorrection. Allows white this beautiful space. This knight is perfectly placed here. And you cannot get rid of this by playing f6 because immediately knight goes to g6. But now, now, you know, the threat of f3 and slowly getting everything. See, you, you, you don't play knight here. Um, what do you play is, is a big question. The computer plays knight e6 and tries to dislodge this bishop. Yeah, knight f6 uh, theoretically is the same idea, putting the knight on d5. But the difference between knight on d5 and knight on e6 is that knight on e6 hits this guy and prevents c4, potentially, because you put the rook here. Yeah, While the knight on d5, if you play c4, he has to go to e6 anyway. Yeah. That's why you play knight c5, put the knight on e6. So if you play knight f6, knight e5, it's already unpleasant position for black. So you dislodge the bishop, bishop goes here, h5, you prevent, you, you prepare f6, king h7, but you blunder because after queen f3, there is no g6 thanks to rook e4. And they both missed it! Unbelievable! See guys, even strong guys, they miss tactics. Amazing. Queen f3 wins the pawn because you don't have g6. Okay? And if you cannot play g6, you're a pawn down. Important pawn. Amazing. I mean, queen f3 is such a natural move, but obviously they thought g6 and that's it. Because if you have three minutes on the clock, you need to cover a wide range of candidate moves and sometimes you just follow your intuition. Intuition tells you don't waste time on queen f3 because he plays g6 and you have to move your queen to play f3. But you don't check rook e4 because rook e4, like, you know, you have the psychological thing that, you know, etc. So they both missed it. And now black plays f6 and white plays f3. Hmm. Apparently, you know, white can prepare this f3 move, but he decides to play it immediately because check and rook e5. And one move difference between almost equal and lost. Because king h7, rook e5, knight f6, bishop g5, queen c8. The difference is, in this line, uh, black has a tempo, but so does in that line. So what is the difference? Hmm. I don't know. 
Okay, we'll find out. Okay, rook king h8, rook e5, knight f6, bishop g5. Take, take, take. Oh, cd4. Mm -hmm. uh, wait. Oh, you cannot, uh, you need to. Ah, okay. King g7 runs into check. So rook gets to e7. And if the king was on h7, you will have king g6 here. Okay? And you'll be able to protect the spawn and uh, protect these guys. Still better for white, maybe, but that's the difference, okay? Oh, he misplayed it. Uh, he should have gone for this line. Check, check, and then two pawns race versus these guys. But white wins that race, I think. Why? Because you combine these two pawns with the mating threats to the black king. That's why. Uh, rook a7, and this looks a draw. Wait, he just blundered. He blundered this, and he spawned down. Oh my god. Black just blundered. Yeah, it's not, not simple position, because your king is cut off, yeah? Not simple, but this is equal. You had to play b4, c5, and c4. Okay. Because this is just pawn down. King f7, but... Yeah, the pawn just goes... Yeah, Grishuk is very, 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 very good with rook hand games. And the problem is, yeah, the rook c5. Wow, Grishuk is so accurate, man. Very, very accurate. Incredible. Incredibly accurate. All right, I found a second way to see, to look at the games. This is how you look at the games. All right, uh, so Grishuk wins this one. Wait, but I missed the draws, yeah? Okay, let's let's look at the draws first. Um, Karlsbad, bishop f4, g4, okay. Wait, I covered this game. Um, yes, I remember I covered this game. So I covered this game. Yeah, this was well played by both. Yes, I covered this game. I remember this game. All oh, right, right, right. I covered this game. Okay, so so let's see how Grishuk got. Uh, okay, lost this game. Question before main line ninety five. Okay, good. Otherwise, black takes on c3, so 95. And yeah, black tries to close the position, given white's pair of bishops. And white just goes for b5, yeah. And black is better. But he has to be very accurate. Um, apparently, bishop b7 to stop d4 because after okay this is also inaccurate you could play d4 why why you can play d4 you can play d4 because they both miss this idea take take and you take with the queen and you push the pawn obviously yeah and then this pawn becomes very dangerous but black is fine because the bishop comes here this reminds me of my game versus Tapalov. I had pawns almost here and bishop on c2. That was the nightmare's seventh game of the match, which I should have won. Uh, terrible memories. All right, rookie one. Preparing d4, but bishop e6, yeah. Take. Queen takes, queen d4, and black is better. How did he lose this? How did he lose this game? Bishop d5 looks correct. Oh, he blundered. Rook b6, black is okay. Rook b7, he missed rook c4. Wow, and queen b4. 
and he probably got upset it's still equal yeah it's still equal but he probably got upset because now white has extra pawn and he also missed this move because bishop is untouchable thanks to this check um, the reason he's untouchable is because if you take take king h7 I think Rishuk was planning on this and queen f3 but he missed queen b1 okay I think that's what he missed because if you don't have queen b1 black plays queen f3 it's at least a draw yeah at least a draw but queen b1 wins the game so if you go for this line from very far you might miss queen b1 yeah okay still good chances for black to make a draw but uh what happened he missed something yeah check rook d1 oh rook d8 is coming oh wow and it's mate okay this was actually a fantastic uh, comeback okay all right fantastic fantastic comeback uh, by this um Indian guy. Wait, is he Indian or is he Iranian? Uh, Iranian, okay. So this new youngster from Iran. Incredible. Incredible comeback. But Grishuk missed just one move and then the mistake did not come alone and he missed uh, the switch to the end game. All right, so that was the comeback game number one. He lost to Grishuk in the second rapid game and he did not switch from Karakan uh, what, did, what did I tell you guys if you lose the game in certain opening you have to switch okay if you don't switch there will always be another way how you will lose this game it has been almost uh, you know I don't know the, if you do the, the study how many games you have uh, made a draw or won after losing the first game in the same opening. And I'm pretty sure the study will tell you that uh, mostly you lose the, the game. Second game too. If you play the same line. Same opening. Not, doesn't matter. Whatever line. It's, you just need to switch the whole opening. Alright, this is probably theory. Okay, this is theory. And Grishuk obviously castles queen sides. It makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, you can play b5. Knight f4 seems wrong. Knight f4 seems wrong because uh, this is bad bishop. Yeah, I expect b b5. Try to open the files here for sure. But this knight is is important. Okay. Maybe he was thinking he can um, get pair of bishops. Play g6. And then bishop g7 and get very comfortable. All right, we'll see. Bishop f5, trading pair of bishops. Um, and this is a very safe position for white. You have superior structure. This is like Berlin, reversed sideways. White has knight and queen, superior structure. Uh, Black king is safe, but you know, again, structure. Um, G3, bishop h6 looks correct. Very, very nice move. Preparing g4. Dodging your pawns from the uh, dark squares to the white squares. Why? Because potentially you want the knight here. Because the only way to get rid of this knight is for black to play f5, which will open the king. But if you manage to play f3, g4, put the knight on e4, then your knight will not only close this file, but will also protect and provide d5 and also c5 96 opportunity okay so this little pawn move is an amazing move okay d5 immediately because it stops a five your bishop cannot be opened because it opens the king great positional understanding by grishuk not surprisingly king a2 grandmaster prophylaxis no checks on the first, no pins on the B file. Centralization makes sense. Protecting the weak pawn, 
also potentially doubling the rooks or here. Unfortunately, after queen f4, despite all this brilliant strategic play, black position is very solid. Very solid. And now he missed this b5 opportunity, which was the only opportunity in the game, I guess. Yeah, This was the only opportunity for black to open up the queen side and get some counterplay. Maybe... Maybe white is better anyway. Oh, but you have this tactic, yeah? Yeah, okay. Definitely not something you want to do when you have one minute on the clock. So black should have thought about it, for sure. Instead, he went very safe route. He isolated the spawn. And he probably plays f5, yeah, makes sense. And takes with the queen. No! How can you take with the pawn? My god, of course you take with the queen. Of course you take with the queen. You don't open your king. And then you just stand. Queen is perfectly placed, hitting everything. Pawn is on the dark square. You cannot dislodge this rook. You cannot attack anything. Because your king is vulnerable. Yeah, bishop is here. Black is also ready to go rook c8 and rook e8. Because this knight is not comfortable. If you play f3, this pawn is gone. So black is going to hit this guy. Okay, maybe white is still better, but how can you take this with the pawn, man? Okay. Um, yeah, knight c3 was necessary, but... And queen d1, that's an idea. Immediately, yeah, checks, rook g1, counterattack. But you should place this and misses queen f2. They both miss queen f2. What? How can you miss queen f2? You can. Knight a4. Yeah, but this is not good. <laughs> now it's not good. Uh, because of this, yeah. And rook is coming here. You rook d7. But the rook c2, rook e7 anyway. See, this knight protects the spawn. <laughs> okay. Nice. And uh, suddenly, d7, rook e8. The king is wide open. White is winning. Check. Yep. And it is winning because... Yep. Okay, let's see how Grishuk converts this. Very interesting. Uh, check, knight b2. Rook c4. Check. Okay, no, come on, you protect the pawn, no, you cannot give it, man, what are you doing? Why are you just gonna play rook f5 and win the game? Oh, come on. Yeah, I would be very curious how he wins if he black plays this. Um, he black plays queen e6. It would be very interesting to see how white wins this game. Okay, he plays knight c4, f3. Because you cannot play knight e3, you cannot play knight d6. Because the queen comes here. And you can't just take this. See, it's a draw. Because king runs here. So, that would make things very complicated for white. Probably he wins, but it is not a simple win. Like a4, f2, and... Ah, now you can, you can take this, but... Okay, you have to calculate this, yeah? Yeah, this is not simple. The only way for white to win is you have to redirect your rooks to winning this pawn, not this pawn. Yeah, still. Okay, uh, so black lost this game. A big fight. And um, he came back again. Also, repeating the same uh, opening. And Grishuk playing the same line proves my point. Yeah, you don't play the same line. Because there's always a new way to lose. No way. He lost this endgame? No. How can this be? My god, how? Come on, everybody plays king d8 here. Come on, man. Everybody and their mother knows how to play this endgame. King d8, king f8 is not played. 
five. My God, what is Grishub doing? He's still okay, by the way. He's still okay. Uh, D4. Yeah, but rook c8, rook b3, and rook here, yeah, probably. Is it? Let me check. Rook b3, rook c2, yeah. Because if you take the spawn, it's check, and g4, and check, and you lose. Yeah. I mean, activating your pieces is number one rule in the endgame. g4 is still okay. But after bishop e4... Oh, you don't want to trade the bishop? Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Ooh. Really? You don't fight for the file? Oh, 21 seconds, okay. My god, I forgot. Grishuk and his state knots. And it's advantage because Black is losing the spawn because of discovered check. And he lost the spawn. My god. Grishuk is getting old, yeah? A little bit. He, he, he just lost this very important pawn, now he is losing the game. But White, plays this, uh, White played this endgame really well. He created all these chances, yeah? He created all these chances. Rook e7. Nice. King is removed. Active king is removed. And now all is left is to... Okay, this is kind of weird, but still winning, yeah? Oh, because king e6 is coming. Okay. Right. Uh, if king e6, then check. Okay, so he's trying to get this rook to a6 so he can play king e6 with no checks. Not bad. I like that. Um, king e8, grab. Finally, check, check, king. And two pawns are a win. He resigns. The easiest win, of course, if you go king and just push this pawn and it's the correct side. All right, not bad, um, not bad, not bad. So he came back in two games and now they have blitz games. Let's see. Grishuk repeats the line for the third time and third time is a charm. He managed to make a draw. Wow. That's a theory. Uh, 21 seconds, no time trouble. Yep, just a jam level play. Um, hey guys, hey new guys. Um, hey Andromeda, what's up? Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I want to see you report uh, <laughs> players in OTB game. Yeah, I, I want to see that. If you can show me an example of somebody doing it, I, I, I'll be glad to watch, okay? Yeah, OTB reporting, okay. Even even I am not doing anything of that level. All right, uh, very funny, yeah. All right, D4, double exclamation mark. And, oh, they both missed it, okay. Black missed um, 95, but I don't know how much of a miss is this. No, it's not a miss, yeah? No. But knight a5 apparently was very strong. The idea of knight b3, I don't know what the idea is. No, it's not. Yeah, why is it better? Um, so wait a minute, d4. So I had to play bishop e6 actually. Yeah, but this, it's, this pawn structure favors white, yeah? Bishop g7, knight h4, fantastic move. Stops f5, white now has superior structure, and white is very close to winning again. So let's see, 97. Oh, okay, g4, okay. 
it's okay. It's still okay, although the normal taking and going for the end game, given how really well this Iranian player plays the end games, yeah, it's advantage white for sure. This end game is advantage white because you fix these double pawns exactly where they at the worst. Yeah, but he plays knight f5. He is going for the for the mate. Uh, there was nothing wrong with playing bishop d2, finishing development, but he wants the mate. Okay, queen d5, and still no bishop d2. Yeah, yeah, but this. Oh, okay. Wow, bishop g2 is very hard to find. Very hard in this position. Because you're preventing the queen trades, pawn falls, and you're preparing finally bishop d2, c3. Yeah, but... Uh, okay, g5, I understand. Here. Queen h6. And white has... Less time on the clock, but the Grishuk does not find knight f5. He's okay with the draw, which I completely understand. He is okay with the draw in this position. I'll be scared too, yeah, because all white has to do is play bishop c3, and bishop c4 and t5 and open this bishop. So it's very, very scary. Understood. I agree. Okay. Uh, so there was one more draw. And the Iranian player apparently had a better position, so we see Catalan. You don't see Grishu playing Catalan a lot. H4. Gary Kasparov's idea. Interesting. H6, okay. And Castle now. Alright, what is the point of H4, H6 inclusion? Is the point is, I'll tell you, is that this square is weakened, okay? So white puts the knight on e5, you don't have that f6 with the pawn on h7 stuff anymore. Okay, interesting. Oh, e3. Alright. Grab, grab, bishop here, rook here, okay. Advantage white. But he missed uh, knight c6 and rook c8, okay, better. And bishop c6 is not correct, why? Why is this not correct? Yeah, looks like white is completely winning. Uh, yeah, 95. And bishop c4 looks very strong, yeah? Okay, but 92 is also okay. But now you have queen d7. Uh, queen b5 first line. Queen h5. The computer likes queen e5 potentially with this idea. Okay, white is winning. So Grishuk was winning. Uh, what happened? Even this is okay. Although, guys, rook c1 looks reasonable, right? Developing extra rook looks very, very reasonable. But d5 is also okay. Oh no, he took here, okay. He didn't take here. Because if queen takes, you win the bishop. But if you take here, then c7. This is positionally busted, but okay. I understand, knight c5, unclear. Unclear, although with pawn on c7, obviously white is completely winning. Completely winning. Okay, but, you know, black has six actions on the clock, d6, perfectly, perfectly playable. Yeah, perfectly playable. Because this position is impossible to defend with five seconds on the clock. And yet this teenager managed to do it. Compared to 30 seconds uh, Grishuk time. Wow. Now that is very, very impressive. How do you defend this position with six seconds on the clock? <laughs> White has extra pawn, pair of bishops, extremely... Okay, solid, solid position, yeah, solid position. Yeah, rook d7, okay, rook d7. Computer bullshit, 
bishop d4, but then, um, okay, not even bishop g6, queen e7. Yeah, you had to play bishop d3, come on, man. No, but you have to. Yeah, the bishop does nothing here. Here, the bishop attacks the king. But okay, e4 cannot be bad. Queen f4. Oh no. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, okay, now black has very good chance to draw this. In fact, the equal in time now, and Grishuk is now playing very passively. Nope, aggressively. Excuse me, what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's time trouble chess. It's bullet chess time now, yeah? Bullet chess. Bullet time chess. Um, finally, black finds a way to... Oh, oh! Come on, Grishuk, really? Queen f3? No. Wow, okay. My god, black took three white pawns in the last 20 moves. Remember how white had winning position, an extra pawn, two pair of bishops? And look at this position. How did this happen? Black is just much better. But not winning. Now it looks winning. Now it looks very winning. Uh, but how? How do you win this? Big question. Um, and the answer is you play rook c7 with the idea rook f7 infiltrating your rook. Okay? That is the answer. Because your bishop is perfectly placed. So you need to activate your rook to the f file. And if white plays here, and you just play a5 and go into the opposite color bishop endgame. Which might still be a draw, but with this pawn running fast, it will not be easy. He misses b4, but bishop e6 is good. b4, take. Wow, Grishuk is lost now, but he's got very, very lucky. He's got very lucky now. Uh, c2 was winning. With the idea of rook c3, taking the bishop and making the queen. Was winning the game. This allows check and rook a6. And now it's a draw because you give up the bishop. Wow. Grishu got very, very lucky in this game. This is a loss. And this is a draw. Let's see how he defended. See, but Grishuk knows how to defend, okay? And that's how you defend, okay? He knows this defense. You know why? Because he lost to me in Istanbul Olympiad. He lost to me this endgame. I was king and bishop and rook versus his rook and king. And he blundered. And he lost the critical game. Because of that, USA won the match versus Russia. Okay, not just because of that, obviously. Naka won the first board, I won the second board. We lost, I don't remember board three or four, but the other guy drew. So the overall score was two and a half, one and a half uh, now favor. And see, and that's what he does. I, I, I taught you this method, guys. See, see, it's now being played in practice. Right, um, and because the Iranian player messed this up, he lost the next game. Um. <laughs> okay, but no, but okay, I can draw that parallel, yeah, because I actually had that game, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait. Grishuk lost? What? No. Wait, did Grishuk got eliminated? No way. For some reason I thought Grishuk won this match. Did I read this wrong? Did I... Uh, wait, it was somewhere here. Oh my god, Grishuk got eliminated! Holy shit! This is what happens when you don't win the game. He had absolutely one game. So, this unknown Iranian player 
with a rating LO of 2577 beats Grishuk in Grishuk's favorite chess form, the Blitz. Who is this guy? 2006. He is 18. Or will be 18. He became Grandmaster this year. Wow. But he has 2570 LO. Damn. That's gonna be next Parham, yeah? At least. Maybe even better. I don't know. Damn. So he actually eliminated Grishuk. Oh, that's that's sad, man. Okay. Uh, wait. They were supposed to alternate colors. Why did they not alternate colors? Because that was a draw. Grishuk was white. Ah, because the new 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 game started. Okay. Uh, still kind of weird. I thought. Did I miss something? Did I miss something? Did I miss uh, this draw? Wait, what was this draw? Seven game was a draw? No, I didn't miss it, yeah? That was correct. Uh, no, it was correct, yeah? All right, so let's see. H4 again. Now black plays super solid, okay. Ninety-four. After queen five advantage white. Queen four. The spawn is hanging. The whole point of h4, you see it? Pawn is hanging. And yeah, but okay, just take with the knight on c4 and you have winning position, man. How, come on. Just play knight c4, open the rook, open the knight, and grab the pawn later. What's the rush? Okay, take on c4. Good. Okay, so what happened? Bishop f8. Why play queen g5? Why not just go back to f4? Okay, that's why. Okay. So rook c1. And black consistently is making... Why is computer thinking white is winning this? Why does the computer think this is winning? What? Check. If I move my... Oh, the queen has nowhere to go. Queen c7, knight check. Queen a8, knight check. And... Wow. Okay. We trap black win. Damn. Also, notice the time again. The kid is down to 20 seconds. Not the kid, teenager. And Grishuk has more time on the clock. And again, Grishuk has superior position. And he managed to screw this up. My god, Grishuk is getting old, really. Poor guy. Also, notice, queen f7 with the same idea. Bishop d5, check. And win the queen. Advantage white, yeah? Queen d2, knight e5, and black is now fine. Equal material. White still has bishop pair, but... Um, yeah, bishop g7 safe. Still advantage white. Knight e6 looks okay. Take. Queen b2 looks very, very logical. f6, check. Very logical chess by Grishuk, okay. Trades, bishop trades. And this is not too fast, yeah? Too hasty. Bishop e4 first. Creates potential threats. Queen f7 looks very strong. But <laughs> unfortunately for Grishuk, square is taken and this square is protected. Yeah. He sees bishop d5. Black sees this move. And queen g8 runs into queen e8. Wow. Wow. My god, he's so unlucky. Yeah, 
Black is so lucky here. He finds all the correct defense moves. So queen e7. Oh, and he misses the win. Oh my god. Uh, queen f8, black resigns. Yeah. Protects the pawn, threatens the mate. No more queen e8. Oh, come on, Grishok. I was rooting for him, you know, because he is sort of my generation. Uh, guys, you see this? Queen f8, beautiful. Yeah, he, he played really great game here. His opponent played great defense, but why still fully deserve to win this? But if you don't see Queen F8 and you see this, then you do not deserve to win. And Black just better, yeah. Starts pushing the pawns. Loses the pawn and loses the game, wow. And that's it. The first to win um, wins the match. Damn. Damn. You know, Grishu had such a winning position, but he couldn't score. That's his problem, yeah? And he doesn't deserve to win. Yeah. But what is surprising to me, the both times Grishu had uh, winning positions uh, coming out of the opening, he had extra material and winning positions which would, he normally wins with his eyes closed with seconds on the clock but you know he gets older yeah and he starts missing stuff and this youngster he played great defense but his blunders are hard to hard to exploit yeah but congratulations to this Iranian uh, uh, new grandmaster really tough match versus Grishuk this guy has a huge potential, so great match, yeah. All right, so the next match, um, the next match is, um, yeah, this was incredible match. See guys how exciting these matches are? Very exciting, yeah? All right, so yeah, um, fine. Okay, so we did this, we did this, um, Grishuk, I'm gonna skip some matches, okay? Well, I have to look at Bakro, my countryman, uh, now, the French guys, especially the guys who play French against the Frenchman, they deserve respect. You know, if you play French against a Frenchman, that, that, that's balls, man, that's absolutely balls. Um, respect. Queen g4, Queen g7, main line. Okay, because Bakro lost in French against Ivanchuk. And he looked at the opening and now he plays the main line, okay? Which is f4, not Queen d3. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. I mean, like, how can you not take this pawn, yeah? I mean, the whole reason f4 is the main line is because you want to protect this pawn. And Bakro forgets this and he gives this pawn. How can you not take this central pawn? Oh my god. Okay. Now it's too late because the end game is... Yeah. Number one rule in this uh, structure. You don't go into the end game with black. Because any end game with a pair of bishops with unstoppable h pawn is better for white. This guy goes into the end game. He deserves to lose this game. I'm sorry, but it's true. You just don't go into this endgame here. Like, ever. Except that Bakro didn't play correctly. Okay. Yeah, this is really weird. Um, okay, rapid game, yeah? What can you do? Now black is better. Black is better, but he is not playing correctly as well. Apparently, see, he blunders. He just allowed to play g4 and g5. Okay, man. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I, I'm very emotional. But yeah, knight h6, knight e7, disconnect these pawns. Make sure white never is allowed to play g4. Because if you allow white to play g4, you, you're, you're, you're just terrible. 
You connect these pawns, man, terrible. Okay. Uh, this is pretty wild game, man. My God, what is happening? Uh, I like C3 because if you take with the rook, pawn queens, yeah? And you get rid of this knight, but okay, I think A4 is okay also. But see, it immediately drops down in evaluation. Yeah, this is crazy position. I don't know. It's uh, okay. Uh, here, okay. It, anything goes. Okay. You can make mistakes here because we're all human. We're not fucking computers. And in the end, it looks equal. But this is bad. Yeah, this is definitely bad. Um, why is it equal? Because apparently this end game is not winnable. Because pawns are here, symmetrical position, and black can easily protect this pawn. No, but no, I disagree. Uh, it is. It should be a win. Come on, it's extra holy fucking change. It, it should be a win. It's very hard, but okay. Ninety-two bishop. What? What? F5? And? How do you win this? And the knight goes to h5? And it's a draw? Seriously? King h4, king g3! Safe king! Alright! What happens? Okay, you, okay, knight c1. Okay, knight c1. Yeah, knight c1 is not easy. Especially getting into the spin, yeah? Extremely scary. Extremely scary, but apparently black survives. Yeah, very interesting. I've never, se I've never seen this uh, endgame. King f2, king h1. <laughs> okay, back. Okay. Bishop e1, okay. And still a draw. Bishop g4, yeah, black gets the bishop to g4. Looks like a draw. Wow, okay, so what happened? How did you win this? Um, oh, it's a draw. All right, it's a draw. My God, what a draw. What a French game. What a French game, gentlemen. All right. Again, we see Sicilian. And we see this line, it's very, very popular. Um, queen 7 f3. White has superior pawn structure. And we have another endgame. So black is pawn down, but white has two double pawn formations, which prevent white from creating any pass pawn. Very clever, very clever. Why has an extra pawn, but it's completely useless. And along with this pawn, this bishop is very useless. Equal position. Fantastic preparation. This is a fantastic preparation. And more, this knight is untouchable. Because pawn. Black is better. Why has to be very, very careful here. Um, now the rooks are going to the A file. And they just made a draw. Okay. I am curious though. Um, what happens if you play knight d7, for example? Because if you play a4, then it's rook a5, rook a1, knight c5. Yeah, black is better. So, ah, okay, d4 here. I think black is better here, especially if you can later put the knight on a5 and go after this guy, yeah. I think white might suffer here. Rook a4. And knight b8. Uh -huh, knight king c2, take king b3. Okay, fine. Still equal, yeah? But tricky. 
All right, very nice home prep. Then we have the next game. Uh, wait, we have seen this game. So which game did I, did I miss? Oh, I missed this game, okay. Um, Petrov, black is switching, yeah? Black is switching. French and now Petrov, smart. However, um, okay, just go into the end game. Play safe, I agree. I approve. Advantage white. I would play h3 here, but rookie 2 makes sense. And a4, but you have to play a4. Okay, good. 94. Because this pawn chain potentially could be undermined, especially with the king here. Okay. Advantage white, but maybe not so much. Bishop h6 looked incredibly natural and good. Yeah. Still not easy to win, but okay. Bishop b5, no, but now black is okay. Bishop. I expected bishop b7, but okay, bishop d7. c6 here. Knight d5. Black needs to get rid of this guy, or at least, at least uh, activate this guy, yeah. But it's advantage white. Uh, I don't like this move. I think, but maybe black wants to play knight b6, c5, yeah. Which is why white, uh, the computer plays this guy. Putting knight on e4, immediately getting to the spawn. It's equal. Should be 3, push f6. Okay, if you take, it's a draw. If you take, it's a draw. Alright, very solid Grandmaster game. Um, black does not have time to go here because king runs here. Okay, and if king b5. Actually, white, white spawn is actually very dangerous, yeah? Okay, definitely not king a5. I think they both missed this move. And now a5, rook f2, a6. If you play rook a2, rook a5 wins. Uh, so check here. Um, yeah, f4, yeah, sure, black is fine. Yeah, there is no way um, because g5, king here, h5, only black can win this. So, okay, good solid decision by White. And we come to the last game, which the Frenchman won. Uh, well, we just analyzed this match between Grishuk and this youngster, and we saw how this youngster was defending his games, tough as nails, yeah? Tough as nails. Um, very good sign of a great character and great um, competitor. Yeah. So I, I think this guy will have very promising future. You know, it's incredible how many talents, chess talents from Iran there are. Yeah. Incredible. Just like in India. Almost. All right. So the last game, and let's see. Yeah, uh, I don't recommend playing these lines against the French guys. They're just too good in these structures. They're just too good. I understand that Injish plays this with white sometimes, but... Um, but if you have to play moves like 91, which is still reasonable, I guess. Yeah, bishop 9b4. But look how, how simply black plays this line. He just plays queen d7 and he blunders. My god, they both blundered again. Why can't just take this knight? If you take with the pawn, take. If you take with the bishop, you get the amazing bishop. Oh my god. How can you not take this bishop? Now you have the incredibly strong bishop. Huge advantage. Huge. Queen a4, bishop here, double the rooks. It's like Volga Gambit, except you didn't sacrifice the a-pawn. It's like advantage white. How can you miss this? Unbelievable. And if he takes on e7, queen e7, there is no... Uh, there is nothing. Because this knight is terrible. I think he needs to play something like knight a1, knight b4, or knight d2, something. But this knight is not good. 
So he plays a4, tries to rook a1, bishop a3 maybe. Okay, black doesn't do as well, really as well. Yeah, he misses f4. Yeah, okay. See how complicated chess is? Even the strong grandmasters, they miss stuff. f4 here, challenging the center. This is like a Dutch thing to do. Guys, remember, you see in my uh, games where I played the f4, g3, reverse Dutch? You know, f4 here, absolutely logical, right? Because in the Dutch, you play f4 first, and then you play c4, and you force black into the structure. But you have to undermine these pawns, and you have a pair of bishops. So he played bishop d2, and black plays queen c8, and he's already with bishop h3, and black is fine. Black is fine because if you get to play bishop, your king is not that great. Uh, knight d8. Interesting. Uh, yeah, very interesting chess, uh, to be honest. Knight e6, knight g5, e4, maybe, yeah? Okay, stopping bishop d6. No, knight c6 back. So knight d8 was a diversion. <laughs> okay, knight g4 makes more sense, but why not knight c5, yeah? If you improve your knights, then hit the spawn. He was probably worried about this. But then you have to see this idea with the idea of c5, knight d6, and you open the whole bloody thing. Advantage white, okay? Yeah. Okay, guys, this is an important idea. a6, bury your knight on b7, but you open the c, uh, the way for the pawn, you close the b file, and advantage, okay? Winning advantage. All right, so he plays f3, he plays very solid, uh, and black sacrifices the knight, uh, the pawn. Sacrifices the pawn. Uh with no compensation, to be honest. There is no compensation, but the compensation is that both players are long time and black is attacking. And we all know how being an attacking side is extremely important in short, uh, in fast chess, yeah? Because you may blunder something. So let's see what happened. Rook here. Uh, Rook a1, reasonable, protect the pawn, king h8, reasonable, and bishop g2, yeah. Oh, black keeps the bishops, okay, but then h3, a6 looks correct, c5 looks correct, knight a, come on man, knight a5, yeah, knight a5, you want to put the knight on b7, d6, you force the trade and then you push the pawn and you win the game. Again. You guys notice this idea, yeah? Knight goes to b7, knight d6, like knight d4, knight b7. Bingo, win. You have to remove the blocker. Come on. Rook d1, still okay, but a little sus. Huh? No knight d4? What? Okay. You know, I think that in a competitions like this, where there's so much at stake, the pressure way higher because you know both of these grandmasters they play title tuesday and they play great blitz and they find all great moves but because of this extra pressure in this tournament you know we we're we are prone to making more mistakes okay we are prone to making mistakes and white is still doing great but black now got chances the knight goes to c3 so let's see and this is the beginning of the wrong plan. I think the idea was if you play c6, knight c3, you just sack this thing. What you do next is you play e3, protect this eternal knight with this far advanced pawn, which is always threatening c7, and then h4, g5, bishop h3. White guarantees himself at least a draw, okay? At least a draw. It makes also a lot of sense, you're just... This is the only piece that can threaten you. It makes sense to destroy it, okay? Get rid of it. Instead, he plays this, which is still okay. But after knight c3, white panics, yeah? White panics, but black panics too. 
Oh my god, what is this game? Uh, Rook d4. Psychological sacrifice, like, boom, out of nowhere. What is this? Yeah. Because if you take with this pawn, obviously the pawn rolls. Black sacrifice in exchange. So you gotta take with the rook. Uh, but he finds actually the first line move. I'm curious why you cannot take immediately. Apparently this is losing. Because... Queen g3. Okay. I agree. Black is winning. Okay. But he finds this incredible... Um, intermezzo and what this intermezzo does is that after queen f7 you take with a pawn and e3 is not so scary anymore yeah because um, black cannot take this pawn that's the whole point so white is winning except the human factor came in and he took the pawn unfathomable he calculates this very hard line and he blunders this because after e2 this pawn is unstoppable, okay? Unstoppable pawn. Pretty much, unless you find rook a8, which he didn't, okay? But why not rook e1? Yeah, rook e1, e2, and then just d5. I mean, just, it's not simple. You have huge race here. Central pawns versus this pawn versus this pawn. It's like... Bloody heck, I don't know what's going on, um, but, you know, I, I think that the presence of the rooks on boards, potential g6, open king, very safe king, but these pawns are coming fast, d6, c6, d7, white has way more chances, yeah? He takes, and he plays this, and he blunders 91, and white is lost. Just in one move, white goes from winning, plus 2, to lost. That's the drama. Uh, bishop e4 is coming, yeah? Yeah, uh, but still, should have taken it. Yeah, uh, we, we all understand that this is coming, b3 is coming, but wait, it's protected. Yeah, I understand that, but no buts, yeah? It's just queen. Queen. It's just queen, man. There's no defense because this is this bishop controls everything. All these pawns are not moving. This pawn is coming. So why is that? That's why he didn't take it. He plays this, takes, and um, yeah, queen f3 was much better, of course, preventing knight 3 But he plays king g1. I think at this point, white just got really, really upset. And he just succumbed, yeah. And he went for this, thinking there is a perpetual, but there is no perpetual. And he resigned. So much drama, guys. So much drama. Um, well, I, 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 I don't know, man. Um, I don't know. So much drama, guys. You see how the games often can go both ways. Grishu could have won, he lost. Uh, Inchich could have won, he lost. Yeah. A lot of nerves. Also a lot of time pressure. Crazy. Crazy match. Crazy tie breaks. But we love, you know, these fighters. They all give it all. You know, these grandmasters give their soul into the games. They make mistakes. They prove they're human. Okay. But they give their best, and uh, that's why we admire them. Yeah? All these games, they show tremendous fighting spirit. The beauty of the knockout is that you cannot get away with the short grandmaster draws. This is not classical chess, this is not round robin chess, you know, where grandmasters make a lot of draws and they try to beat up the people who are not in a great form. In this, you have to fight every game, try to take every chance, or you get eliminated. Simple as that. Simple as that. All right, we're coming to some other games. I'm gonna start skipping some people. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the Blue Bound game. I'm definitely gonna go over Vidits versus Master Vasilis. Looks like an incredible match. Okay, let's start. 
So third game. Scotch. Nope. Bishop c4. Okay. Wow. Digging up ancient... Uh, I don't even know the name of this gambit. But, you know, Vidit is considered to be a leading opening specialist, not for nothing. Not for nothing. F6. King g6. And black is better. Black has a pawn up. Uh, but they just go for this draw. Okay. Fair enough, actually. Fair enough. Fair draw. So, draw, draw, draw. So, we go into this game. Next game. So, Master is going for the Khan. And this guy says, no, I'm going to play Bishop E2. Well, it's still Khan, yeah? Uh, I don't believe in Knight of 6 in this structure. I believe in Knight E7 development, but okay. Every Grandmaster treats, you know, the opening line differently. Off beat line. Um, black looks worse. Okay. Bishop H6. Looks like actually big advantage for white. So what happens? Um, okay. Yeah, but if you allow... Okay, so what was the problem? The problem was that you should have taken this. And knight d4, yeah. Because if you take rook takes queen b6, there's queen f4, and white is hitting this guy. And if you play a5, then rook d1, you don't have king g7. Yeah, so maybe it was better to play a5 immediately. Um, because if bishop f3, then you just take, take. And black is okay, yeah. Because even minus pawn, minus this pawn, if black creates the pressure on this guy, puts rook on c5, black's fine. A little bit better for white, but playable completely. All right, so black survives pretty much, yeah. White has advantage, but black survives. But after bishop f4, castle looks completely okay. He's trying to force the trades. Knight e5, beautiful. Bishop f6, rook d4, sharp, very sharp, nice try. Uh, queen c7 was very interesting, the idea of, I mean, bishop c7, bishop e6. <clears throat> but sometimes, you know, if you let this bishop alive, black can just give a rook for the spawn and perfectly playable. This is Khan! And this is completely okay for black, yeah? Actually not. Yeah, b3, h4. Actually, it's very sharp. Look at six. Great move. You need to get rid of this bishop to prevent this uh, bishop g6 stuff. Uh, and if you play bishop e4, then t5 and um, no attack. Yeah, just no attack. No, no, no threats. The spawn is hanging, makes sense. So that's why he takes, takes, takes. Queen f6, black is better, but uh, inaccuracy. But because you cannot protect the spawn, looks like a draw, yeah? Two, yeah, now it's a draw. All right, not bad, uh, not bad. Black, Khan, holds. So that was a draw here, so they get another two draws. And then finally, these guys, they score. Again, ah, okay, bishop e2 line. And bishop b4, bishop b6 is standard. Bishop b4 is playable. Um, I'm not an expert here, but... Hmm. Let's try to look at this logically, yeah? a3, queen b3 runs into knight a5, yeah, knight e5 is not correct, and this is also not correct, but okay, reasonably close, and it's a draw, <laughs> and it's another draw, okay, 
because rook and game is a draw. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the grandmasters, when they don't want to take risk, they'll find to, ways to make a draw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, another draw. Last draw. <laughs> Last draw. And guess what? Queen's Gambits. Everybody's favorite Queen's Gambits. Whoa, 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 whoa. Beat it. Wow. Impressive. I mean, 92 castles standard, right? But f4. Wow. You know, I had this position with this kind of structure against Gelfand in my candidates in 2007 with black. And I held this game beautifully. At some point, I was much better, very close to winning. But I didn't win, I was very upset, and I lost the second game, and I lost the match. Um, yeah, very interesting structure, but I think black's fine. Knight e4 apparently is correct, but I would have played something like knight b6, c6. And, um, but that allows knight e5, yeah? And then you play c5. Okay, sharp. Many ways to play this. Knight e4 is interesting. Um, and white plays safe, yeah? You don't take this pawn. What happens if you take this pawn? Probably... Probably not such a great things happen to you, yeah? Knight b6. And then... What? Ooh, rookie 8. Wow. And the idea is... Yeah, but I really doubt they saw this, okay? I really doubt it, and black wins. I really I really doubt they saw this bishop d5 rook e8 idea. But okay, the intuition tells you that you do not take the pawn. You play knight f3, you cast them. That's why you become a grandmaster, okay? Wrong. Knight g3 first. Um, make sure white loses the casting rights, and then c5, yeah. Bishop f5 looks wrong. Um, see, g4 now and g5. In the spirit of the London system, or queen g2 immediately, you castle and you just you just open the file and you go for the attack, okay? You spend only one pawn for this. Great investment. Okay, you do this. Okay. But Vidit is very, very cautious player. Okay, we have to make sure we say that. Yeah, knight c3 and knight e4, advantage black. c6, g4. Uh, and he missed g5 again. But this is complicated. Why is g5 good here? I don't know. Because you take with the rook. Oh. Oh, oh. So it's rook f1 and actually rook h4 and terrible mating threats, yeah? Wow, not simple. g6 is just king h2, rook g1, and you take on g6. Damn. They both missed it. Same idea, but now the knight goes, okay? And you don't have time for g5 in black places, and if g5... You can just um, take this twice, yeah? So no g5. And black has advantage. Black has advantage, so he plays this. f6, f5, but no more g5 break, ever. Black is playing excellent game. Black is playing excellent game. A little bit early, knight e4 looks normal. Um, Aggressive, but in the end, it is always equal. Right, we're not falling for the mating trick. All right, great game, another great fight actually. Great strategic game. So finally, Mastro loses, let's see, same line. Uh, Okay, black is doing okay. A little bit inaccurate, knight e4. 
The reason 94 is because you win a tempo attacking this guy. Because now it's a problem. Um, so bishop e7, take, take, rook a7. The problem is that if you play bishop c6, there is bishop f3, and you're sort of stuck, okay? So he plays h5, standard idea, bring the rook from h5, play f6, it's possible. But bishop f3, yeah? So, and rook d7. Great job. Dismantling black's khan. Great job, yeah. And see, black is just one tempo short. If his king was on g8, then you can take, take, play bishop e2. It's probably still lost, yeah. f3, king f2, something. Yeah, it's still lost, man. See, white managed to break through. And uh, there is no mating threat, there is nothing. Because the second rook is not in the game. It's not in the game. Um, Yep. Great performance. Absolutely magnificent um, performance for white. Um, really good game. Okay. That's how you handle Khan on the white side. Okay. Bishop f3. And But the problem for black is that white managed to successfully open the a file for the rook. Because usually uh, black doesn't allow that. And the maximum you can do is w rooks on the d file. Black plays rook c7. And it's equal. But if you manage to open the A file and play rook A7, it's very bad. So, and all you need is you only need to win one game because second game you draw, you win the match. So Mastro played this again. Uh, he's probably hoping to get the same position as before, but black plays accurately. And uh, zero chance for, for, for white. Black is actually better. Black is actually better. Black is pushing for a win. And it's a draw. Okay. Alright. Um, very solid performance by Vidit. Super solid. You know, with this kind of game, I don't see him losing to anybody. Yeah, He had zero losing chances. Alright. Who is next? Um... Yeah, we covered a lot of games already. Yeah? So let's go now only to the most famous guys. I'm going to start skipping people. I'm going to start skipping people. Okay. Uh, Bartle versus Donchenko. I'm going to skip this. Donchenko wins. Congrats. Uh, Cheparinov beats Swain. Congrats to Chepa. Duda wins in the main time. All right, did I miss anybody here? Uh, Karana wins in the main time. Michal wins in the meantime. Um, yeah, so we didn't miss much. Okay. So I'm gonna skip these guys. Uh, Gusenov, I'm not gonna cover. Okay, Wesley So important. See, this guy could have beaten, uh, could have been eliminated Wesley yesterday in the main game, and he, today he lost the match because he didn't win yesterday. All right. Um, We missed our junior Gacy. No, I think he is. I, I will return. If I see his name, I'll return. Okay. Arjun playing with it. All right. Let, let, let me do Wesley and then I'm going to return. Um, I'm going to do Wesley's game first. Okay. So it's Catalan trying to achieve advantage versus Wesley in the opening. Impossible task. Maybe Fabi can do it, but I think he's only one. Because Wesley's opening prep is amazing. But his middle game can do better because he misses knight a7. After bishop a6, black is better. Okay? But he missed knight a7. Amazing. Uh, kudos for the Turkish player for spotting this move. Okay? And large advantage for white. And the question is, can he repeat his amazing performance from yesterday and obtain winning position? First line, not first line.
Knight e5, perfect play. Queen a4, white is completely winning. Why would you move your knight from this glorious position, man? Knight was perfectly placed there. Okay, so black is trying to create some sort of a fortress. But if Wesley played this uh, with white, he would win this for sure. Bishop b5, bishop... See what the computer does? Uh, bishop tries to go to b7. Okay, he was thinking king d3, but then queen c7, queen c1 is unpleasant. Yeah, bishop e8 and knight e5, yeah? Looks very, very strong. Uh, knight c6. Oh my god. Oh my god, he... he okay, wait, take, take e5. Okay, wrong move. Yeah, wrong move. My god. Yeah, okay, it's not easy to see king of three though. Let's be honest. How many of you see king of three? And the idea is that you cannot take with the bishop because of a7. The idea is you take this pawn with the check. Critical. Otherwise, check and take on f2. And now you have second pawn, but it's very hard to win. It's still very hard, incredibly hard to win this because black maintains total control over this diagonal the pawns are not going anywhere all right so chances for white to win this are minuscule the only way to win this the only way i can see it is if you somehow manage to force black to play d4 and close this bishop and then slowly play bishop c4 maybe even trade the queens and try to rush your king to the two pawns here not easy but good chances okay Good chances to win this. He plays this. And if you take now, he takes with a check. Okay. But now black is better. Oh, he actually lost this game. Oh my god. White was completely winning and he lost this game. Crazy. Crazy. Man. That's gotta hurt, man. If you lose a game like this, that's gotta hurt. For sure. Wait, equal, equal, how, what happened? Queen g1, wait, he misses the draw? Queen e5 is a draw, why? Because you take this, it's a draw, okay? Perpetual, these guys are way off, and it's just draw. How can you miss a draw, man? <laughs> My god, oh, what? The, oh my god, Wesley, you tell me Wesley missed this win? No. Wesley missed this win, okay. Damn, damn. Top Grandmaster is blundering stuff. He had 30 seconds, 30 whole seconds. Entitled Tuesday, 30 seconds like an eternity. Man, pressure, humongous pressure, F5. Uh, take, take, yeah, king, what? Oh, come on, king c2, come on, man, run with the king, you need to run with the king. Passive, bishop e2. And now black is winning, finally. Finally black is winning, yeah. Okay, this guy was winning and he lost. My god. Woo. And Wesley playing b3, okay. <laughs> Nakamura's favorite line. Uh, but white is extremely solid. Extremely solid line. You know, this b3 is extremely solid stuff. Very hard to lose. Nice choice by Wesley. Nice choice. Nakamura would approve, for sure. Queen b2. Rook b1. Beautiful. Uh, bishop d1, but also king comes, and black is not better at all. Yeah, f4, yep. Black is trying, good job, but you just have zero chance of winning this. And just take this, yeah. 
And now we see the opposite side, yeah? Now we see again the queen and bishop versus queen and bishop. But it's um, Weston who's got extra pawn and he's okay with the draw, obviously. Yeah, good job. All right, let's go back. Uh, yeah, Emre, Khan, Khan Emre had a chance to win the game. In the first game, he lost it. With white, okay? I mean, at the very least, he should have drawn the game. But he lost it. You cannot draw, you cannot lose with white in such matches. You can't. Because coming back with black, impossible. All right, Vidit is actually playing blue bomb. He's not playing Eri What are you guys talking about? You tricked me. You're not playing Erigacy. Uh Ilmaz beat Liang. He's playing Karana. You know, it would be actually very interesting to see Liang play Fabi. Younger generation playing older generation. I'm very happy that Robson qualified. And uh, Anton got eliminated by this very talented Azerbaijani kid. He's been playing on Title Tuesdays a lot, so we know him. Maxudlu Parham. I ran. Old, but good. Qualified. Good job. Okay. You know, I still remember... Uh, RJ Leda Ely. Dude, are you waiting for me to make an outburst about cheating players? It's not going to happen today, so you can just... You know, come back uh, after tomorrow, okay? And try again. <laughs> you know, your, 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 your comments about cheating and, uh, you know, and kek, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work, man. Not today. Uh, it might work if uh, I was discussing Title Tuesday games. Yeah, yeah. On Tuesdays, definitely come on Tuesdays. Then you will see me probably reporting and accusing people and uh, being mad and all hell. Yeah, so you should come on Tuesdays, okay? My recaps are... No, they don't contain this stuff, sorry. Okay, so you're wasting your time. Anyway, um, so uh, what I was going to tell you... I, I forgot, my God. What I was going to tell you guys, uh, I was going to tell you some story, but then I looked at the comments and I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, uh, Rajabov, the local, the local, still considered to be a boy wonder, although he's been married several times now with kids. He's no longer a boy, but he's still, you know, number one Azeri player, yeah? Yeah, I think this rivalry between him and Mami Darov was... You know, Mamidaro has, to be honest, I think Mamidaro had a bigger talent than Rajabov, but Rajabov getting all the support and Mamidaro not, that really, really, you know, put a damper into Mamidaro's career, because I think Mamidaro was way more talented and had huge chances to, for the World Chess Championship, but I don't think he got as much support as Rajabov. Yeah, very sad because you know I used to know uh, Mami Darov personally. We used to be like friends and hang out all the time at the tournaments. But then you know we drifted apart. Now I don't really know him much. What he's up to? He actually killed me in some very nice games, OTB in Bundesliga, and uh, you know that didn't help drifting process. But you know, I wish him well. Okay. Eric Gacy, is that what you guys want to see? That was crazy match, yes. Um, something about the young versus Kurana. The old versus... Uh, yeah. All right. Probably not that important. But okay, let's see Eric Gacy match. Yeah, I, I saw these games. They're absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, this is this match is perfect example. Yeah. Also, how how incredible this tournament is, you know? I think they should make a lot of tournaments like this because this is incredible fighting chess. You don't see short draws again. Uh, you see people playing 200, 300 LO points difference. And guess what? The game showed that these guys, they can fight the much higher LO player and actually cause problems. Okay? This tournament, every time it comes, every once, two years, it shows how artificial this uh, separation is of these players 
It also reminds people why the top ELO players, they don't play in the open tournaments. They do not play in the open tournaments. Because they play in the open tournaments, the lower rated guy plays first line moves, second line moves, makes a draw on the top guy, loses like 5-7 LO points for game, okay? And that's why the high LO players, they just play in these World Chess Championship tournaments, and they play in their specialized, you know, rating, uh, average invitational events, okay? And team events, obviously. And they prepare really hard, and they beat the lower-rated guys in those single games, yeah, single matches. And um, but open tournaments, no, because in the open tournament, the chances of you losing a lot of rating points is um, too high. And it's been proven again and again. Players like uh, Vichy lost a lot of points in the Gibraltar Open. Yeah, Vasily, me. I mean, I lost my twenty-seven fifty. Over the time, you know, I was 2762 in 2013, which was 10 years ago. And since then, I only played open tournaments. Okay. I managed to hold my rating at the 2660 level for a long time. But recently, I just went to play Dortmund Open. I lost like 13 points. And I was kicked out of the top 100 for the first time. Not that I care anymore but you know again so world cup that's why i love world cups these high elo players you know scared for their ratings just kidding all right f3 unusual um especially with knight c3 but it actually makes sense right because it sort of gives a tempo for white's e4 uh-huh a6, e4. Oh, transposition into the French. Because in the French, f3 is not useful. <laughs> nice, nice. Because you have to play e5, and then you have to play f4. Interesting. So, guys, next time you play Bortnik, try this against f3, okay? I'm very curious. He probably has something prepared for this line, because he's like a leading specialist. Uh, but this is not it. This cannot be it. This cannot be it, man. Uh, C5 should be... I think B5 should be better first, yeah? B5. Preparing B4, C5 or something. Because you want to force white to play E5 anyway. And then B5 is a program French move. C5, okay? The computer says after B5, black is better, okay? Crazy! And c5, I don't think it works. All right, there was a famous game where black played c4 in this position and just made it white somehow. But probably not in this game, yeah? Yeah, probably not in this game because you have this and you have knight f4. But, okay, not simple, yeah, not simple. So, it takes only four. Oh, endgame. Endgame is... No, you play rook d2, you have no advantage. Rook c4, man. B is... Fight! Yeah, be active. Rook c4. Maybe. <laughs> okay, he is much better calculator than me. Uh, because I didn't see 97. The computer didn't show me 97 either. But now you see 97, b5 is a problem. Yeah. Okay. So he's correct. Rook c4 is active, but suicidal. Fine. Rook d2. But then black is fine. Yeah, because black is better actually because this is weak. Weak, 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 weak pawn. And black has comfortable development and small advantage. Actually, white is in trouble. Um, bishop b4, correct. Come on, man. Take on c3. Make sure double these pawns. And then fight for an advantage. Dude, what are you doing? Uh... Because now white is okay. Wait, white is not okay. Uh, oh, he got it all wrong. My god. Come on, Azarov. Take here first. Take here second. Play knight d5. Then b5, rook c8. Huge advantage for black. It's huge. Because this pawn is weak. Knight is eternal. Then you bring your king or f6 and something. Advantage black. My god. What's going on? 
And now it's just draw. Wait, why didn't take on t5 and make a draw? Very strange. Okay, now take, rook c8, take, okay, draw. This is famous position rouser. You always get this structure and uh, it's a draw, okay? A little bit dangerous for white, but it is a draw. So g4, rook d, take, take, rook d5, rook d3. Uh, pom, 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 pom. Oh, rook f3. Nice, actually correct. Okay, seven correct, and just equal. Black is actually worse. Uh, it's pawned down, but okay. All right, so what's next? Um, that was the first draw. Wait, I missed this game. Oh, that was Magaranto. Okay. So this game, so we're looking at this game, yeah. So now Eregesi plays French. <laughs> wow. French is actually very popular these days. Guys, you know, study the French defense opening because it's very popular right now and it's uh, apparently it's good, okay? You should start playing French. I would seriously consider playing French except I hate the opening because it gives me so many terrible memories, okay? I just can't bring myself to play it uh, because of that match versus Tapalov, okay? But judging by the chess aspect of the opening, black's fine. Uh, again, pawns on the light squares, but you get the nice uh, square. And also Sicilian structure, which is good for black. White has nice knight, potential attack. So both sides have certain trumps. Let's see. Um, I really like this knight e7. You're opening the bishop and you sort of want to play bishop d5, but most importantly, you want to trade white's attacking potential. If you trade off the rooks, black is a little bit better because of the pawn structure. So let's see. Queen g4, creating knight of seven threats, bishop d5. Bishop c2, normal move, yeah. Rook f8, okay. And g6. Yeah, we saw knight g6, right? Knight g6 is also possible. And actually it's advantage to black because you cannot take f1 takes, right? That means you have to play something like this, but then black takes this pawn on a2 and black is better. So g6 is surprised because at the queen h4, but okay, f6, yeah. Can you take the a2 pawn? No, knight b4. I mean, you can, but it's not that good. Take, take, bishop d c4, take, uh, rook d6 is better, but king h8. Again, small plus for white. Yeah, I, I don't understand king h8. Uh, there was nothing wrong with, uh, but it's okay move. King h8 is reasonable. I cannot really criticize it. The problem is that this pawn is weak. And white is going to try to pile up on this pawn, but his king is also weak, yeah? So this bishop is bloody strong. If you trade the bishop, just draw. So let's see, queen c5, bishop here, rook g8, maybe g5, yeah, coming sometimes, maybe. I really doubt it though. Oh, wow, ballsy. Uh, bishop f3, very safe play, okay. And queen f5, also very safe. Uh, but if you play like this, black is actually Black is actually worse, you know? Why is he worse? Because these are not the strength, these are weaknesses. With the queens on board, these are weaknesses. And this is also weakness. With the king open like that, very large chance to lose a pawn. If you lose the pawn, it's immediately a win. So, but this is incorrect. See? That's what I said. Rook e4, 4c5, and hit this pawn. And if you're forced to play rook b8 at some point, there will be c4. He plays rook d7. Queen e2. Okay, queen f4. Wait, wait. So if rook d4 does not work, then what? Rook e3. Okay, makes sense. But it doesn't work either. 
Oh, rook f3. Okay, rook f3, you're hitting this guy. With a, with a large advantage. So, irrigation is not very accurate this game. Um, he's accurate, but not quite enough. Yeah, but this is just check, 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 draw. Okay. Yeah, irrigation missed a small chance. Small chance. Um, okay, wait. Uh, that was the draw we saw. We saw this draw. One more draw, right? Okay, one more draw, and then he wins. Okay. So it's another French. F6, okay. Oh, this is old line. This line is ancient. This line has been played before I was born. And it's considered to be... I'm not sure about knight g4. Okay, apparently they're... Apparently they both know this, but... Yeah, apparently there was some problem with queen d2. The computer doesn't show it because... But there are huge analysis here. Ancient analysis. h3 is... e5, what? What? I don't know, I'm not an expert, but why not just take the pawn, yeah? Hmm. 95. Okay, yeah, because now black wants to take on f4. Yeah, bishop g4. So you have to play this. Bishop g4. And he missed queen a4. Okay, with the idea of bishop c4, king h8, 95. And black has absolutely ridiculous bishop e2. Wow. What a move. What a move. Because if you take on a5, d5, just pawn up for white. Yeah. Still, bishop f3. Yeah, amazing. Probably draw. Okay, but he plays queen c2, king h8, bishop e4. Just take, yeah. Take, take. And the problem is there is 92 check. So he goes like this, and it's just dead draw again. Again, the rook end game. <laughs> Wait, black is better. Uh, black is better, but it's not a win because his king is cut off. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's not a win. This is not... Uh, wait. Why not rook a2? Oh, rook a2, rook b4. Uh, okay, and he's threatening rook a4 and hitting this guy. Yeah, okay. Nice game. Nice game. Uh, this gentleman played very solid chess, but also very entertaining chess. Um, and finally, Irigacy wins utilizing bishop g5. And it's the same line. Yeah, knight c3, a6, e4, e6. He plays queen d2. Correct move, right? B5. But bishop g5 and white has advantage. Um, yeah, that's the problem with b5. Because if white managed to trade the bishops, then um, the structure is not good. He plays f6. He plays a fighting move. And I think uh, Azarov now makes a mistake somewhere. He, uh, he, this is definitely not correct. It cannot be good. Bishop is passive here. Uh, king of seven. He was hoping for king of seven, c5. But the king is very, very unsafe. Um, I really don't like this idea. Something like, you know, c5, bishop b7, knight c6, queen e7, normal development, and then long castling probably should be okay. Um, bishop e7 looks terrible. c5, okay. Rook e1. Oh, this was very, very sharp game, right? This was very sharp. So the computer says take on d4, queen d4, knight c6 is not good, but knight e5 is good because you can play knight f7, protect your king. And then white has to find this ridiculous move, the idea of rook bishop here, and rook g8, queen h5, and if you play knight f7, then it's a tempo game. And tempo game the computer is really good with. And it's advantage because white is fully developed, <clears throat> black king is stuck in the center, underdeveloped queen side, <clears throat> constant threats to black. Yeah. <clears throat> so queen d4, 
I think knight c6 actually makes more sense developing, right? So queen g4, queen h4, and then knight b6. It still looks problematic, to be honest. Still looks very problematic, but the idea is you can run with your king. Yeah, but advantage white for sure. So, b4 makes sense, but no. No. Yeah, I thought knight a4 was automatic. He was probably afraid of this. But then you take this pawn, and there is no threat. Wait, knight c6? Oh my god. Oh, it's just starting. Action is just starting. Black is fine. Wow. So Eric Gacy is correct, actually. Yeah. Oh, but he can take the knight, of course. Yeah. He can take the knight and take here. And this should be advantage white because um, it's not easy. Not easy. You have to be very accurate. Black has great pawn structure. Black survives, black is better. Good fighting game. I, I like this game. Uh, so knight b1 protects the king from all these queen a2, queen a1 mates. But um, knight c6, yeah. Knight d4. Knight e5. Black is better. Black took over. So Zarov is having great game. And what went wrong for him? Incorrect. Queen d7 is advantage. Why? Why is it advantage? I don't understand. What's wrong with rook c8 also, by the way? Rook e5. Really? Rook c2, king d1, rook f8. Oh, you can. Oh, of course. Double attack, yeah. Oops, yeah, okay. And bishop protects the mating zone. So, queen d7 first, prepare against this rook e5, protect the bishop, and then action, yeah. Like, how does white play here? For example, bishop f4, rook c8, c3. Queen a4 wins the game. Wow. Yep. You see how, how powerful just this little queen move is, yeah? How powerful. He plays queen c7 protecting the knight, attacking the mate. But there is no killer queen a4 idea. It is a killer idea. And f4 and white wins. So white tactics wins the game. Oh, bravo, 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 queen f5, very sharp, bravo, okay. Because if you don't have this move, black is fine. Your bishop is trapped, yeah? But queen f5 resigns immediately, gorgeous. Beautiful mates with the bishops. Beautiful. Yeah. See, youngsters and their tactical eyesight. They had two minutes at this time, both of them. Very sharp game. Black was better, but yeah, he missed queen d7, rook c8, queen a4 trick. Yeah. Uh, even here, yeah. If he didn't play this, if he played rook d8 and then king f7. Black is probably fine because um, white king is very unsafe, yeah? Very strong bishop. But he played this and he missed f4. Yeah, amazing game. Beautiful. Um, like Petrov Demiano variation? I heard about it. Is the Trump popular game? Yes, Mr. CB Chess. Trump is actually very popular. Um, hi, James Anderson. What's up? Okay. Right. 
Yeah, Arjun, um, yeah, he is a tactical monster. Tactical monster. He has been trying to improve his strategy which uh, and play slower chess, which is great. But he in tactics, he was always a monster. Always. So Azar going into this versus him, big risk. Okay, what else do we have? Um, what else do we have? All right. Somebody run the time clock. How much already I'm online doing this? I'm curious. So we saw um, Eric Gacy game. And Eric Gacy is playing who? He is playing Fedor Safe. My God, guys, this is the, the dream match actually. Eric Gacy, Fedor Safe, both highly gifted tactical players. Highly gifted. Also, strategy is about. This is absolutely epic match. Um, Eric Gacy versus Fedor Safe. I'll recommend you watch this match tomorrow. I will not cover it tomorrow. So, but this will be very interesting. Vashele Graf wins, no surprise. Lequan wins, also no surprise. Ponomaryov, remember we talked about Ruslan Ponomaryov? He qualifies and manages to beat this kid. Gelfand loses, we saw this game. Um, okay, and David Navarro wins. And um, because it's like really late, so I'm gonna only look at Nakamura's game. And I'm cool today, okay? So let's go over Nakamura's. Um, oh, this was crazy. Yeah, this was crazy game. Uh, yeah, especially crazy because um, Black had much easier way to make a draw. So Naka plays his favorite B3 system in the rapid tie breaks. Makes sense, yeah? Because in rapids you cannot uh, uh, refute the system. It's actually not refutable, but Black can equalize if he wants to, yeah? So knight of 3 knight d2, and we sort of reach this position. Guys, this structure is often reached in the queen's gambit, accepted, okay? A lot of times. Bishop d3, best move. Queen e2, black centralizes, h6, very solid, white, and b5, I think it's pretty reasonable. Get this knight out of uh, the way and uh, try to trade the rooks, makes a lot of sense. Trade, trade, rook c8 was also reasonable, a5, trying to trade as many pawns as possible, makes sense, knight d4 but b4, yeah? And this bishop is doing a great job covering this square, protecting the king, covering that square. So black is fine. The only problem for black is his knight on a7 is a little bit passive, but he has no weaknesses and it's temporary and white has probably no way to using this. Oh, okay, there was a way to use your piece majority in the center, but it, it, it involves finding this crazy knight g4 idea. It's actually not so crazy. And you see how white's advantage really lights up? Because if this rule gets here, black has problems, yeah? Yeah. Um, so this looks reasonable. Because if you take with the bishop, then it's take, take, f5, and probably bishop b5. Yeah, bishop, no, not bishop b5, and rook c7. Yeah, knight c6, and black is fine. That's why you take with the rook, but if you take with rook, just trade, yeah? Take, 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 f5. Takes, 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 Nakamura. Yeah, but a little bit better for black, uh, a little bit better for white, yeah? Because of the pair of bishops, this actually white has more chances to win this game than what happened in his game, okay? So this rook c4 was extremely interesting. Um, knight c4, going after the bishop, black just trades. And uh, you cannot trade, right? Uh, e4, 97, black is very solid. I like this maneuver. I like this maneuver, you're covering your king. And now the bishop is ready to go here. White has no way to play knight d6. 
If he can play knight d6, get the pawn here, advantage white, obviously. But he can't. Bishop c6 makes more sense, but okay, rook d8, fine. Uh, white tries to improve his position, but knight d5, perfect timing, knight b3, perfect. Also nice, great game by both players. Inaccurate. And after rook c3, white's advantage is becoming actually very real, thanks to this knight on d6, yeah? Rook d1 apparently is a mistake because now um, uh, the bishop is ready to come and knight d6 is not possible. So he takes, takes here, queen e3, active rook, active queen. Ooh, nice. Trades. Knight d6, bishop c6, fine. King e7, it's a draw. Except that what started happening is the black has 16 seconds and Nakamura is the well-known, um, you know, flag uh, trap specialist, okay? He's creating life as difficult as possible for black. Um, King d4, bishop e6. So he starts, you know, doing his thing. Rook here, knight here. Yeah, bishop g6, safe, but knight c8 with idea of knight e7, creating more threats. Yeah, except that rook e4 looks good. Knight e7 and bishop h7, which is still okay. And uh, and black can take this pawn. I don't understand why he didn't take this pawn. Okay, rook e1. Reasonable. Rook c1, rook f1. <laughs> okay. Take the pawn. You can take the pawn. It's okay. Uh, because you bring the white king closer. Yeah? King h7. If knight h5, bishop g6, and rook g3. But black has lost the pawn. Okay, so. Rook g3, and it's a dead draw, except, except that black now, you know, if you want to make a draw, bishop h5 is just way easier draw. He plays this, which is also fine, rook g5. What I don't understand is why he would take this knight and allow that position, although it's a dead draw, yeah. White has no threats. You can play king h6 and just almost instant draw. Bishop c2, probably also instant draw. Because now he was, he was mega uh, massaged, okay? This is move 106, and Nakamura played this game until move 144, you know? The reason he played it is because it's a tremendous psychological pressure and you're demonstrating your alpha something, whatever it's called, okay? And you're trying to force your opponent to, into this beta mode, okay? And I think that's the reason why uh, white, why this guy, why this Indian player didn't play his second game so well, because he got absolutely brutalized in this end game. Because normally grandmasters would agree on the draw right here, just you know, because it's a well-known draw, and they would just agree in a draw. But, of course, Nakamura utilizes his right to brutalize this guy because of his low time. And, um, yeah, black still has to be a little bit accurate, yeah, so he doesn't blunder like simple things. Check. So they play, 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 play. There is almost no way for black to lose except that if he blunders something like really badly. So, um, and what happens is that, you know, probably this guy got traumatized after the sand game. I'm pretty sure. And um, the last game he played, he lost, yeah. Because he lost with white. 
And that can replace this. Um, pretty famous line. Black is a little bit better. Knight a4, bishop here. Knight c5 is okay. Rook c1. Still okay for white. And he takes with the pawn. A questionable decision. Because why, why do you want really to screw up your pawn structure? Yeah, you get to play a 4 get to get the rook here, but really, why? I mean, bishop f3, king g2, queen b3, knight d3, rook d1. It's just a very solid advantage for white, okay? The problem is that he probably was afraid of this, but you can't really take this pawn, yeah? So you have to go back and then white plays queen b3, knight d3, rook d1, rook c1. And the presence of this weakness gives white advantage. But he takes with the pawn, which is also okay. Um, g5 actually correct yeah we saw many times how in this tournament you have to fix the spawn double pawn structure before you play f4 because if white plays f4 it's um probably very solid game for white yeah so g5 is correct and bishop d6 um equal game white is a little bit better what happens now is purely pretty much experience stuff yeah that's what I would call it, experience stuff. Um, you need to develop your bishop. He wants to put the knight on f5, but this thing prevents it. This bishop is not playing. And what do you do when your piece is bad? You improve it. You play bishop f1, bishop d3, king g2. And if it is a draw, it's a draw. Okay. So what happens? Um, queen g7. I don't know. Naka tries to trick him. Um, because if you play b6, wait, actually, knight is hanging. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, so he protects the knights. You can protect the knight by playing queen d8, but then it's very passive. So queen g7, bishop f1. White plays actually really well this part. Um, and this move, this move is, uh, is double-edged. Let's put it this way. Yeah, normally, just play g4, okay? g4, because if this bishop ever is gone, you're gonna put f4. And it'll be a long time before this knight arrives here, because that means he has to let go of this pawn protection and everything. Okay, in the meantime, there's also sometimes if this bishop tries to go here, the rook e5, f4, okay. But taking on h4 is very double-edged. Um, yeah, Nakamura is actually walking a very fine line here between uh, taking a risk, yeah? He's trying to win very hard. Um, correct, yeah? If you take on g5, queen h3, and you have to find bishop f5, the only move which leads to a draw. Possible, possible to find it. Bishop f5 is better because white is better. So, how do you lose this game? Big question, yeah? Big question. You can play knight d7, and it's a very safe draw. He plays knight d3, a better move. A better move, and they repeat. White can make a draw. White can make a draw playing bishop f5, but he plays b5. White plays for a win against Nakamura, one of the best players in the world. That takes a lot of balls. First line, bishop f5, first line. And Nakamura now plays a losing move, but in retrospect, it is a winning move. Uh, the, it is losing because after queen a1, there is no defense against this check, potentially with rook one check. So his only defense is to play 98. But then white plays this, you don't, have queen f6 because of rook e8 and the huge threat is queen a8 and black is lost okay plus four so nakamura probably saw queen a1 but he decided that this guy is not probably gonna see this it was a huge gamble huge gamble um uh Right. 
Yeah, but you see, if it was not this guy, what happens if... Okay, what happens if this guy sees queen a1, he plays it, yeah? Nakamura loses the game. Just simple. Nakamura would lose the game. Huge risk. Queen b6, knight e8. And now black is fine because queen is running to f6. Potentially with the huge threats of uh, putting the queen on the mating zone. Um, so, and after this black is better. And, the, and, he, and he, this move loses, yeah. Probably the guy only just realized that bishop g4 runs into this, queen f3 and queen d3. He probably just realized it. Um, and he thought maybe he can take on d5, but then rook d4, yeah. Wins. So this queen raid, after this pawn, you go pawn grabbing in the position where your king is really vulnerable. Bad idea. Very bad idea. Okay, queen a7 was even better. Queen a7, go in and try this. Because queen a7, 98, you can still play this. Yeah, rook e1, queen f6, queen a8. And if bishop e7, uh... You have to find this, which is not easy, but you can do it. I believe in you guys. You can find this move, and white, and white wins, okay? So, queen b6, and after this, rook c7, white is completely lost. He finds some only moves, but queen e7, knock is very clinical in his precision. And um, counter attack, immediate, plus material advantage. And yet another brilliant move. Knight is removed. If knight goes, it's just, you know, there is rook c1 coming, yeah? Queen g1, king f8, queen c2, and I think white resigned, yeah? Yeah. Uh, so, if you play sharp position, you better, you better calculate correctly, because um, if you miss something, you can easily go from advantage to lose in just pair of moves sad but uh, you know um, it's a sport yeah what can you do I, I i love that white did not repeat the moves and i like the fact that white went to try to play for a win but yeah you gotta if you do that you have to be very very precise you yeah? know naka walked really fine line i am pretty sure he wouldn't play something like this against higher rated elo people and even in this game, he took a huge risk, yeah? Huge risk. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's recap, okay? It was, I don't know how long, however long it was. I think it was worth it. By the way, thank you for subscribing. Uh, Mr. Punk Ferran, thank you for gifting the subs. CB Chess, thank you for subscribing. Hakidress, thank you for reading three hours ago. Okay, I'm actually for four hours, yeah? Not bad. Almost. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this recap. I'll post this and yesterday's recap uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow I get a break, all right? And I'll see you guys after tomorrow and I'll cover the classical first two games. We have a lot less games now thanks to the people being eliminated. We have exciting matches ahead. Let's look at the matches. Tomorrow, they start tomorrow already. So we have Carlson versus Tari. This match will be a lot closer than last time because Tari progressed. Huge improvement over the last two years. Uh, Taba Tabai versus Keimer. Very interesting. Keimer is a huge theoretical player. Taba Tabai is now a general, he improved, he, he made a huge improvement in, in his general play, but also in his opening. He, he know his openings well. Sanal versus Korobov, fantastic match. Uh, both very aggressive players, tactical players. Um, despite the difference of almost uh, 100 elo, I would call it a very close match. So it depends if Korobov, Korobov is, uh, is a great, um, has a great preparation methods. Um, if Korobov uh, catches Sanal in some prep, uh, good chance he wins the match. Ivanchik versus Wei Yi. This is also 
of course, I'm rooting for Vasily, yeah, but Wei is much younger and uh, Chinese chess school is still strong because it's very solid chess, but um, I believe in Vasily. He can make it, okay? Uh, Swain versus Ting Yingyao. Uh, this guy just eliminated Mamediarov. You know what happens to people who eliminate higher LO people? They usually lose the next match, unfortunately. That, that is the statistics. So I, I, I think Swain will win this match. Uh, Hao versus Wang Hao, another Chinese player. Wang Hao haven't been seen since candidates, you know, in a long time. And David is also very experienced. I think... But Wang Hao is very tricky. He's a dragon after all, yeah? I don't know. A little better chance to Wang Hao, probably. Valiejo versus Yusipenko. Interesting. A little chance... I, I think Valiejo... The strong side is prep. He also is very aggressive player. Extremely interesting match. Um, Yusipenko will not get an easy match, but he's a favorite, yeah? Naranyan versus Gukish, two Indian players. Everybody's talking about Gukish and how he's number one player, but those people probably don't know who this guy is, yeah? This guy's been playing Tile Tuesdays for the past three years, improving rapidly. He is no pushover. I expect this match actually to be very tough for Gukish because Gukish has everything to lose and this guy has nothing to lose okay and if he beats Gukish then everybody knows will know about this guy okay he is extremely dangerous Giri versus Abasov interesting underrated highly talented but Giri has more experience that's yeah Swidler versus Van Forest very interesting you know incredible matchups actually um Swidler we, we don't need to say much, yeah? The guy is a legend. Um, Juan Forrest, he won a bunch of Vikings A tournaments. Uh, not a bunch, but he won one tournament. He showed that he can play with the best. Um, I think Juan Forrest preparation will be better than Swidler, but Swidler will be better psychologist, yeah? Very interesting. Uh, Chess-wise, Swidler has more experience, but Juan Forrest is younger and more energy and great prep. Equal chances, I would say. Dubov, obviously, a huge favorite. Uh, Salem versus Danishwar, who just beat Grishuk in the Blitz tie breaks. You know, Salem is also very strong in the Blitz. I expect this match to go to the tie breaks. Uh, if the match goes to the tie breaks, uh, this Iranian guy has a good chance. It'll be equal. But he has to survive the two games versus Salem. It's not going to be easy. Salem is very strong in prep, very strong grandmaster in general, huge experience. Advantage to Salem, okay? Advantage to Salem, especially if it's a classical game. If, however, if they draw the match, given how well this guy played in the blitz, I would say equal chances in the blitz. Interesting. Yu Ying Yu versus Bakro. These guys have history. They've been playing each other like, I think, since they were kids, okay? It will be interesting to see who wins. Um, Blue Bomb versus Vidit. A little Vidit is a little favorite because his nerves are better. Blue Bomb is nerves are not so great. In terms of preparation, they're both very good. In terms of general understanding of chess, again equal. But psychologically, Vidit is is like a fucking rock, man. Is unbreakable, uh, and Blue Bomb is known to you know to collapse a little bit. So, a little better chance to beat it. Dick versus Nihal. Interesting. Dick has been uh, very talented, progresses, improving. But last, uh, last year, he's been very unstable. And Nihal Saren improved his game. This last two games show some incredible stuff. So, expecting great stuff from Nihal. So, small advantage to Nihal. Mamedo versus Nip. Pomnishi, obviously Nepo is the favorite, but Mamedov still uh, is no pushover. Yeah, Kurana versus Sulmaz, clear favorite for Kurana. Robson versus Gadim Bailey. Gadim Bailey is dangerous, so Robson 
is a favorite, but not as much as people will think. Uh, Max of Blue versus Donchenko. <laughs> okay. Uh, these guys are permanent Bundesliga players. They know each other really well. Uh, slight advantage to Parham. Chaparino versus Duda. Mm, Chaparino is amazing guy, but Duda has advantage. Yeah. Domingos versus Guisenov, clear advantage to Domingos. Uh, Wojtkiewicz Shitko, who just beat Shankland. Yeah, but I, I don't think Wojtaszek will fall for those tricks. So Wojtaszek, clear favorite. Shevchenko versus Serana. Very interesting match. Very interesting. Um, this will be a big fight. Both players aggressive, young, hungry. Uh, Preparatory styles, uh, Shevchenko is probably a little better. Serrano is a little bit more experienced. Incredible match, actually. Either one wins is um, fine. Uh, Mossard versus So. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wish my countrymen, because I'm in France, I'm going to root for Jules, okay? I'm sorry. I'm going to root for Jules, you know? I, I've seen this kid grow up uh, into the strong grandmaster and the French champion. First time I saw this kid uh, when I played in 2016 in Capelle Le Grand tournament, which I won. That was open tournament. But in that tournament, this guy prepared the line for me. And I barely made a draw and got away. Uh, and he was a kid, okay? So I thought this guy has a huge potential. Wesley So is an established grandmaster. Obviously, you know, uh, he's a favorite. But, you know, I still have to root for Jules. Underdog. I am rooting for the underdogs most of the time. Uh, Rajabo versus Santos Latas, likewise. Um, I like this guy. I watched him and I played this guy in many open tournaments. I watched him grow. He's like Rocky Balbo versus the current uh, you know, champ. Yeah? Rooting for the underdog. But Rajabo has better chances, for sure. Grandelis Amin versus, uh, Grandelis versus Amin. No clue. <laughs> but I think Amin is very dangerous. Uh, a little more favorite. I think he's a little more stable. Eric Asif is for the save. We talked about it. Fantastic match. Sindarov versus Vashir de Graf. Sindarov obviously is a dark horse. Dangerous. But again, rooting for the Frenchman. I like Vashir de Graf. I think he deserves his chance on the candidates. Uh, Le Quang versus Ponomaryov. Ooh, 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 <laughs> okay, uh, this is actually a great match, uh, Le Quang versus Ponomaryov, oh, this is gonna be fun, <laughs> both highly competitive, uh, both highly, you know, <laughs> strategic players, um, <laughs> tough as nails, both of them, uh, Le Quang coming from his win in Bill, Having practiced, Ponomaryov having a great practice right now in his match versus Colors. Equal. Completely equal. Uh, Vidigo versus Berkus. Uh, no clue. Berkus beating Gelfand, but Gelfand didn't play that great. Um, interesting. Uh, Pragna versus Navarro. Obviously, I go with David. I wish always go with David. You know, he is the, I think he's one of the very few representatives in chess who has a little mental problem, but still managed to play amazing chess, okay? And uh, he got really far. He was number one for, in his country for a long time. Pragna is obviously a great player, but I think uh, they have everything equal in terms of opening preparation, chess understanding, Strategy level, but I'm just rooting for David. I like him more. Not not that I don't like Pragna. I like Pragna also, but David, I just you know big fan. Okay, uh, Nakamura versus Glidura. This is not even a contest. Um, Nakamura wins, pretty much. Okay. Um, Well, maybe he doesn't have a mental problem, okay? But, okay, I apologize. I didn't mean it in a bad sense, okay? But, you know, there's something a little 
Different. Okay, let's call it different. I take my words back. Not mental problem, but a little different. Okay, there's something different about this guy. And you know, I, I again, I was a big fan. I didn't mean to offend this guy. Yeah, David, I'm sorry if he, if uh, I called you having some mental problem. You know, because mental problems is a thing that anybody can have. Yeah, everybody in his own different way. I have mental problems, a lot of them. Okay, um, but. You know, I think among a lot of players, we are like more distinct guys who, you know, have it more clearly. I have a lot of anger issues, you know, you have this uh, incredible talent, we'll see. Again, um, great stuff. Um, Ivanchuk is definitely different and again, <laughs> yeah, now we're talking about people who are very distinct, you know, these people are distinct uh, because they're so vastly different from everybody else, okay? Um, so, yes, saying this a mental problem was incorrect, I apologize, okay? Uh, mentally a little bit different, distinct personality traits, um, okay? Um, all right, let's not focus on this, yeah? Let's, I, I did the matchup. I did a quick matchup run. I hope you guys understood my reasons why I was voting for some guys and not the others. Okay, and it is 1.20 in the morning and I've been up for four hours, I need a break. Okay, my head is uh, killing me. Uh, I got a huge headache. All right, guys, I'll see you after tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. No, I absolutely love David. I always wish him well, um, fantastic guy. You never seen anybody as respectful as David. Also, great sportsmanship. I remember many years ago, you know, his opponent got into some problem, misplaced some time or peace, and they just offered him a draw. Okay, amazing guy. Anyway, huge respect. Okay, um, no, I'm not going to talk about my 2007 World Cup right now after four hours of going through this uh, check. Uh, the hell is it? Recap, yeah. My head is not working. Guys, give me a break. Okay, I'll see you after tomorrow, everybody. Good night. Mm.